Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 9th of March 2021. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside Australia. Acknowledgement of country. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they're of continual importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal groups and other First Nations who are present today. Acknowledgement of Colonel William Light. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning history. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand, Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. Please be seated. Members, um, apologies and leaves of leave of absence. Um, I have an apology from the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I also have uh, Councillor Kira and Councillor Abraham today who will be uh, joining us a little bit later this evening. Confirmation of the minutes from the 2nd of February 2021. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Sims, and a seconder, Councillor Knoll. Members, any comments? If not, uh, go to the move to sum up. To the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, deputations. I have one deputation granted at the time of the agenda, uh, which is Heather Kroll from the Adelaide Fringe. So, Ms Kroll, if you'd like to come forward, you have five minutes to address the Chamber. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Can I have a little handout? If it's, is it, am I allowed to hand out anything? Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for having me and uh, hello everyone. We're in the middle of fringe so we just went the halfway point has gone now so we've got two more weeks to go so two more weekends and two more weeks and uh, I just thought I, I just wanted to touch base with everyone give a very quick update on where fringe has where we've been coming from over the last few years what uh, where we are right now in the 2021 fringe and obviously it's a different year this year under COVID but um, we've worked very closely with SA Health and the government and 
the council and we've been able to deliver an absolutely phenomenal year this year that's bigger than our wildest dreams really in ticket sales so far so it's great news so um i just it's good to always remember where we've been last year uh, we sold 850,000 tickets which was um double what we sold what we sold in 2014 and virtually quadruple what we sold in 2010 so you know the adelaide fringe has had an unbelievably exponential growth in ticket sales there's very uh, few events in the whole world that would have experienced the sort of exponential growth that the adelaide fringe has um experienced and it's just so important that we remember how rare and unique and special it is and how great it is that it happens right here and most of that happens in the cbd we do have venues outside of the cbd but most of it is in there the audiences are so diverse um, we have uh, people from toddlers to uh, great great grannies so it's a, it's a very inclusive festival we try to um, make sure that there's something for everybody uh, as you know we're an open access festival so we're a platform and anyone can jump on entrepreneurial skills are rewarded at the at the Adelaide fringe if you want to run a venue or if you already have a bricks and mortar venue and you want to put shows in it that's the the Adelaide fringe is there for you i do not curate it from the top down it's from the bottom up and that is so um, important in our inclusivity but it's also a lot uh, driving a lot of our growth is the fact that there's um so many artists and venues jumping on our platform um, we ask our, every year we ask people um, you know in our surveys how they feel about fringe um, over 66 percent are saying it's good value or very very good value for money and almost 96 percent um, agree or strongly agree that it significantly improves the images image of our region um, of adelaide of the state of of, of, uh, of south australia um, and 97 percent in our survey respond that it's very important for South Australia and that's 80 percent strongly agreeing so the the numbers are massive and it's important to remember the scale of the Adelaide Fringe when we think about events and, and activities in the city there's that to get that sort of percentages coming back in our survey we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people um, who are so behind uh, the fringe and get involved and contribute um, we as I said last year we sold 853,000 tickets to the value of 21 million dollars and just to let you know that the way that the Adelaide Fringe box office works nobody is getting paid a guarantee to put on a show they only get paid once they sell tickets and so that money is we we pay that out to the artists and the venues once their season has finished that is a massive injection into the arts in, in into the whole arts economy but it's also a massive injection across all the venues generally the venue and the artists take a ticket split and it's either 60 40 70 30 80 20 it depends what they've agreed but there's huge amount of money from that 20 million 21 million going into venues and artists pockets um, we have an independent economist who assesses the economic impact of the fringe every year last year it was um, uh, measured as being almost a hundred million dollars and while that's the whole fringe i just remember remind everyone that most of that is in the cbd the, there is of course a bit that's out in the suburbs and the, and the rest of the region of the state but uh, most of that ends into the city um, 41 million dollars of tourist spend from the last year's fringe came in um, we are exceptionally grateful for the sponsorship we get from the council but it's important to highlight that the return on investment to the adelaide CB, city council and the cbd of, of, is enormous pop of, it's between 150 to one for every dollar we get from the council about 150 to 200 dollars is injected back into the city so it's just really important to remember that the um I've, i wanted to give you a little bit of an update on how we are now on the last page um despite covid we do have around I'm 900 sorry, Carl, i'll just actually ask you to yeah finish up yeah. so despite covid we do have 950 shows 
21,000 performances in this fringe despite COVID across 326 venues. And so far, I just checked as we left, we've just almost hit 450,000 tickets sold um, at, to a value of 12.5 million. So, I mean, just thank you to everyone who's involved because the fringe you, is booming Thank you for presenting to us tonight. Thank you. Are there any questions I can have? We don't no take questions. questions. No? Okay. And good luck for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, members, item eight on the agenda is the petition. Sorry, sorry Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to uh, propose a reordering of the agenda and move that we deal with uh, motions on notice and motions without notice as the next item on the agenda. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Sims, but I'm just going to go ahead with the agenda well, as is. procedural motion, but Okay. Serious. Thank you. I have Councillor Moran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I don't wish to speak for motion. Thank you. Councillor Moran? Did you wish to speak? No? Members? If not, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Just a uh, point of uh, order. Was that a motion without notice, or is that and, and is, is that motion acceptable at this juncture? Under the standing orders. There's nothing preventing the members from moving that motion, Councillor Kerr. So to assist you, Lord Mayor, I think the first motion that we're dealing with is Council Moran. I thank you. I can read my agenda. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thank you, Councillor Kira, I actually have um, put the seating um, in place for the meeting. Um, thank you. I'll, I'll see it already. I didn't realise that. that no, I'm really actually uh, the the question was asked and answered from Councillor Martin today. If we're going to continue with the seating as uh, as was laid out in the chamber, so for this meeting we were. Okay, members, I put the seating on the table. Please sit at the chair where I have actually allocated your seating because it is in the order. Councillor Moran, I'm going to go to 7.1. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I move that council request councillors who are on paid external boards representing the City of Adelaide consider following the Lord Mayor's excellent example and donate or hand back the remuneration received for being on that board. And I'll look for a seconder, members. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, Councillor yes. um, um, I applaud um, the Lord Mayor's um, comments, uh, well, statement that she returns her external board position to, um, I think it was, to the Art Prize, the Parkland Art Prize for APRA and other such uh, boards. Um, we are paid to sit on external, our, remuneration for being on council is what it is and we should voluntarily do the other boards. We weren't paid before and I don't see why we should pay, be paid, paid such an amount. In fact, sit on the Central Market Authority, I think, is equal pay to... Shall I wait till he's sitting down? Yes, members, no, if just... Um, is equal to... Um, equal to the amount an, an ordinary councillor is paid for the entire year of sitting on council. I think it's incommensurate with the work put in. 
Uh, I'm not mandating this, but I'm suggesting that this, this be the case. And I, for one, if I was in, on any external paid goodies, would happily hand mine back to, um, to something within, as you have done, uh, Lord Mayor, to something relating to that board. Um, I think that would be a good gesture in these lean times. Um, councillors are, that's why we have the after hour meetings, so that um, uh, we can attend other boards, uh, which are generally in the daytime as well. So I think it's unnecessary for us to double, triple our council salary by sitting on these external boards. And as I, I for one, would uh, quite happily hand mine to something related to that board. Thank you. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? Members? Councillor Hyde? Yeah, I just have a couple of questions um, to the administration, Lord Mayor. Um, have, have any elected members, or I suppose, first of all, can I clarify the meaning of external positions? Because we have, we have positions to other organisations that are appointed, and we have positions like ACMA, which is a subsidiary. Is this, is this motion to be read as encompassing all paid positions or? Um, CE, acting CEO, sorry. Uh, thank you, through the Lord Mayor. Um, I wouldn't classify um, either of our subsidiaries as an external board. Um, they are fully owned subsidiary of the City of Adelaide. So it would be all the other board positions where elected member representation um, is required. Yeah, okay. Um, and, and could I just ask, wanting to establish precedent for this. Did Councillor Moran donate or give her money back to the city when she was receiving sitting fees for the cap? Acting C. Through the presiding member, I'm not able to answer that question. Okay. Did um, Councillor Martin do the same when he was sitting on the Through the presiding member, again, I'm unable to answer that question. Okay. Did Councillor Sims? Thank you, Councillor Hart. Well, I think just... we get the idea. Um, it Can is up to take... every individual councillor to uh, to do what they wish to with their remuneration. Could I get an undertaking that those questions are answered for those initial members of APLA and also CAP as well, the first appointees to those? Thank you, Sam. Through the presiding member, I don't feel comfortable um, retrospectively asking uh, former councillors who represented the council at a different point in time on various boards whether they did or did not donate uh, their remuneration. I appreciate that. That's fine. Thank you. Members, Councillor Mackey. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I think. And, and as you'll note, there is another motion uh, that I uh, have on the agenda this evening uh, regarding uh, community service recognition. Um, I think community standards have shifted quite noticeably in the last couple of years, uh, and I absolutely commend you, Lord Mayor, on your leadership um, in regard to the donating back to organisations where you have, uh, by virtue of uh, being the Lord Mayor or being a member of this chamber um, and being voted to serve on those boards. I think it's a very commendable example. Uh, I'm, I would be, if I were, on a paid board relating to my council service, both internal in terms of authorities and external, um, uh, happily uh, oblige. And so I'm, I'm happy to support this motion. I wonder though, in, in supporting, uh, whether I might ask the mover, Councillor Moran, would you be prepared to vary the motion to incorporate the um, inter the council of authority board position remuneration? I actually was surprised at the answer. I did mean the um, the subsidiaries as well, um, and the rationale is that they, that council would not be sitting on a subsidiary. Those councils are sitting on their per their position on council. So I do. I, I meant that to be included. Obviously, I didn't word it properly, and uh, Acting CEO is quite correct. This doesn't include those, but I'm happy to incorporate that they be included. Members, Councillor Sims. 
Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm also um, supportive of this motion. It is um, only a, a suggestion. It's not compelling um, anybody to have to do it, um, but suggesting that people might like to. This isn't something I would have supported previously, but I was um, really persuaded by Councillor Hyde's arguments that he's made consistently in this chamber, where um, he said it's not about money, Lord Mayor. Um, he's put that argument very strongly that um, there's really no cause to be concerned about the distribution of paid board positions on this council because that's immaterial. I'm persuaded by that argument um, and I think why not then um, encourage all members who are the beneficiaries um, to follow your fine example, Lord Mayor, and um, donate back the money. So I'm certainly supportive of what Councillor Moran is seeking to achieve. Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Lord Boyd. Mayor. I just uh, endorse uh, what Councillor Mackey said, that is to say that times have changed. Um, and, uh, and by the way, I have no conflict of interest. I received no remuneration for any board position. But look, there is a view in the community, and I, I suspect it's a fairly unfair view, that uh, people in public life sometimes have their, to use that disparaging expression, snouts in the trough. And I think uh, with that in mind, it's important for people who are in public life to demonstrate always the highest standards of propriety. And Lord Mayor, I commend you also. Um, I acknowledge that every cent that you earn from every board goes to charity. And that is a fine example, and I commend you for that. And also uh, for uh, rejecting the offer of a, uh, a council funded car. Um, those are the kinds of behaviours that I think it's incumbent on this council to endorse for all of us. Um, and I think uh, by doing so, um, we, uh, we say to our ratepayers, look, this is a council where people are paid an honorarium to undertake their duties. And if there are any other duties associated with that, then those are things that they do giving free. Um, as, uh, Councillor Sims reminded me, uh, Councillor Hyde's, this is not about the money. This is not about the money. This is about public service. So um, let's just make it clear to people that there is no stop for the gravy train here at Town Hall. Um, it can bypass here. We are all here because of public service. Now, I'm just not sure if I saw Councillor Knoll's hand before. Did you wish to speak? You did. And then Councillor Kira. Your comments. I think it's it's uh, uh, and I too am on no, no boards for which I get any extra funds or extra income. But uh, I think it's for those of us who have the ability to have an income that's sufficient and and uh, etc. That we're able to look after ourselves without necessarily having the income from what you do here in council. We're actually uh, uh, disencouraging people of goodwill and good character and who want to contribute uh, to you know, the greater good and contribute to the local council, etc. And we're actually telling them, and in a sense shaming them, because if they're not able to, uh, you know, if they need the money as part of their income to be able to uh, live and, and uh, contribute to us while still uh, you know, having an income so that they're able to uh, live in a, you know, normally. Because uh, we do expect a lot. We do expect a few days a week and all the rest of it. And, and if we are, because we have the, those of us who have the ability to uh, have an income and, and uh, not dependent on this, we in a sense shaming them because they're not able to do that by uh, saying that. And this is a personal thing and it should remain a personal thing that you want to contribute to your incomes, etc. But again, because we, if we are creating um, a, a process, we're also creating a, a bit mechanism by which uh, people need to then put their hand up and say, no, I, I need to have the money and I can't do this. And I think it's up to the individual and there shouldn't be anything from uh, us as counsellors to uh, sort of compel and also encourage. Uh, it's more about enabling them, they decide what they wish to do. I think it's totally unfair for those people who don't have that, uh, aren't as lucky as that. Councillor Sims. Apologies, Councillor Kerry. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I concur uh, with Councillor Knoll. Um, I think this would be a mistake. I, I do urge councillors to put aside politics, uh, put aside, you know, fairly shallow uh, uh, reasonings, put aside factional grounds uh, uh, in voting for this. You'd be making a mistake. Um, we 
need to do more to encourage regular folk to, uh, uh, to, to go into public life. Uh, at this time, more than any other, we should not be discouraging regular folk. Um, I look around the chamber and I would dare say, uh, with respect, Lord Mayor, this would be a decision of elites. Uh, this would be a decision of elites to entrench uh, the role of local government within elites. Elites are on track for uh, sinecures, uh, potentially uh, for the rest of their life. Um, I certainly don't need the extra money. I haven't had a single uh, pay position whilst being on the council. I'd be happy to do this, but it's exactly what Councillor Canal said. This is just shaming people uh, into having to do this. It's a Clayton's. I mean, if you want, you know, really, it's disingenuous. If you want to do uh, this motion, you ought to do it properly, and you ought to, you ought to make it mandatory, uh, Lord Mayor. If you want to do this, it should be done properly and done mandatory. This is a sly. These are weasel words. This is an attempt. Councillor Kerrer. Councillor Kerrer. These are weasel words. Councillor Kerrer. That is a perfectly legitimate political expression, Lord Mayor. It is not a personal slur. Weasel words. I, I've asked you to stop, no, please. No. That's three times. If you, I, I've asked you not to use that expression. And common expressions in political common minds expression. are now banned Correct. according to no, the rule by you. Is that right? I would just there? like everybody I to actually, Councillor Kerra. I will respect your decision, Lord Mayor. I will respect your decision. What I will say then, I won't use those words. I think this is disingenuous. Uh, if that is acceptable, this is disingenuous, and there are many uh, common terms for disinge disingenuousness in the common parlance. Uh, which could apply here. Um, that is what this is. I think it's a mistake. Let's be sensible and let's not crush uh, regular folk from uh, turning up uh, to public service. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Members? not I'll go to move to sum up. Councillor Moran? This isn't disingenuous. Um, in fact, truly the Lord Mayor disingenuous. Um, being on council isn't supposed to be a job, except for the Lord Mayor, and that's why she's paid the mediocre bucks where we pay the poor bucks. Um, it, you're meant to have a life experience, you're meant to have a job um, and do this as your civic duty. You're not meant to be uh, making money out of it. And as I too was persuaded by Councillor Hyde's um, argument, this is not should not be about the money. Um, if you indeed do need the income, uh, if you're unemployed, um, then there's a I don't think anybody would be shamed if you took the board uh, money. But if you don't need the board money or um, you want to help the council during these austere times, this is not disingenuous. They're not weasel words. I will not make it mandatory. Um, it can be done confidentially. Nobody needs to know whether you give it back or not. We're not all trust fund kids and uh, we, um, for instance, I just use the example of APLA. None of the state appointees are paid for their positions. They return their money because they consider that the government considers they are employees and it's part of their part of their job. Well, I think all of us here have had jobs. Some are retired, but I, I don't think that we should present council as something where if we get on all the boards, uh, completely. Um, disregarding, um, what do we call it, um, you know, merit-based, that you want it because you need the money. Um, I think that's a sad state of affairs. These are austere times. It's up to the members whether they want to do it. We can, it doesn't have to be broadcast or even told, told to us, but I encourage councillors to do this during this time. Because I think, while I agree with what Councillor Hyde said, it is interesting that the dominant factions pretty much always take the uh, paper position. If you remove that, well, it's just a, a historical... Thank you, um, I think if it's not about the money, let's remove the money. I notice when we get the non-paid positions in council, nobody wants them. Most of them go to the administration, nobody wants them, they're not paid, so we don't take them. So let's take the distinction between the some of them very highly paid boards um, and subsidiaries, if we take that out of the equation, potentially, um, then it is a more level playing field. So I, I, I don't think this motion is disingenuous. Um, it is uh, sensible. Uh, we are paid very well, more than, more than any, uh, and it's not supposed to be an income, it's a, to cover your expenses. We are paid a lot more than any metropolitan councils. Even the super councils aren't paid as much as we are um, because of our state role. So I recommend this motion. Members to the vote, those in favour?
those against? Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Martin. And members, that was carried. Council Rand, uh, item 17.2, General Post Office Motion on Notice. I move that the Council is immediately informed of the results from SCAP, re the GPO development. If the delay with the development is indefinite, the Council invest in, instigates discussion with the State Government and the develop, developer to determine how the landmark heritage building can be maintained and possibly used in many years before the development uh, commences. I look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Now, this doesn't punish the developer. Um, anybody can understand the hotel being delayed, but it, the developer, it's, if I read in the advertiser's true, is, is going to proceed with the hotel development, but leave the development of the GPO uh, in mothballs indefinitely until the financial situation of the state improves. I don't think that's good enough. I think when a developer buys a building of such state importance, I'm not saying that they be forced to develop it as the lovely plans that we saw some years ago. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting that it not be mothball, therefore won't deteriorate, and it's used either for um, uh, displaying historical artefacts, a um, uh, bit like uh, William the other. House, um, that it be uh, um, kept in order and people can um, have tours through it. Look, I'm not going to say what the answer is, but this is not in any way forcing the developer to develop that, that site as per promised. I can understand these are difficult times for developers. Uh, however, I think it's very incumbent on the state government uh, and ourselves to investigate and to encourage an alternate use while this building's um, sitting empty. It's already deteriorating and, and very dirty if you walk along the side of it. Uh, so the deterioration is always, it's been sitting empty for quite some time. Um, so this isn't any impost on the developer and I'm sure the developer would um, appreciate some use in the meantime so he's not left with a building that's basically fallen down in, a, uh, in the interim. So I, I commend this motion to you. Councillor Martin. Um, a brief comment, uh, Lord Mayor, um, and I thank uh, Councillor Moran for this. Uh, the building is vacant um, and there is a, a risk of deterioration and the administration makes clear in its advice that there will be a period of time uh, before development occurs, um, as it makes clear that we have no real authority in this matter. But what, what it does say, which is I think important and which Councillor Moran is looking for, is the beginning of a dialogue. Um, a chance to sit down with the developer and see if we can provide any assistance to ensure that this landmark, and it is a landmark, um, one only has to look at uh, paintings and drawings of the city 150 years ago, and there it was. So um, an important part of the city that deserves protection, and if this motion allows the administration to go and have that dialogue, then that's a really good outcome. Members, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Just very, very briefly, I, I, I will be voting in favour of the motion. I accept absolutely at face value Council Moran's um, uh, stated intent. This is not punitive. This is to seek a dialogue. Um, this is, as Councillor Martin has also said, one of the state's most significant heritage buildings. Um, I understand from my own inquiries that uh, there is a substantial investment required for earthquake, earthquake mitigation, uh, which is an exercise that Council with Council's uh, owned assets and, and Council state Sims, government have, have undertaken. Uh, this was, of course, an Australia Post Commonwealth uh, Authority uh, asset, and I believe that's not been done. So a dialogue would be very, very helpful. Members, if not, back to Council Moran to sum up. As was quite rightly said, we have no power over this. We're not a planning authority anymore, um, but we are and have been, and historically we are facilitators for our city. And that is possibly more important to get the parties talking to each other 
than it is having a actual power to, um, I've quite liked that power, to uh, make those decisions. But facilitation is a very important part of what we do in this chamber. And I think this one is a screamingly, obviously necessary facilitation to happen. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand, remain standing. All names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims, Councillor Murky, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Carer and Councillor Martin. Um, now, members, I, I do understand that we have changed the order of the agenda tonight, but we have two externals, one who is council um, here with us this evening for two items on the agenda, uh, one being 12.2.1 and uh, for which we have council and the other being 10.5, uh, which is the representation review. And I would ask members that we can actually bring those two items forward. Can I suggest, Lord Mayor, that we keep going with motions for now um, and we should, we're going through them quite quickly um, and we should be able to then get to the items that you're looking to prioritise soon. But my preference would be to continue with the agenda as reordered. Members, um, can I ask for the Chamber to see whether we can bring that item forward, particularly with Council in our Chamber at the moment? Lord Mayor, are you asking us to speak? Well, I'm asking the members to vote whether I can bring those items forward, given that we have Council sitting in the Chamber. I'm not doing a rescission. I'm seeking leave of the meeting to actually go to the items for which we have got um, council in the chamber. Um, yes, Councillor Moran. Keep them waiting too long. Um, could we make a time? It's what five past six. Would the um, external um, people mind staying till seven o'clock or? Um, well, members, we I would, I would ask that this. we can do 10.5, um, which is a representation review. Um, and I would ask that we could do 12.2.1, but 10.5 particularly, obviously we have um, a guest here in the chamber, um, as we often bring things forward when we have people in the gallery. Yes, Councillor Martin. So Lord Mayor, you're proposing that we now go into confidence. I'm proposing we do 10.5 first. Yes, and then we go into confidence. And then to do and we the come one back for which we have. Do motions Correct. again. Okay, got it. Thank you. So with leave of the meeting, I need a show of hands to do 10.5, the representation review. Members, I show of hands. So one, two, three, sorry, I'm sorry, members, show of hands. So leaving the meeting, thank you. We'll do 10.5, which is the representation review. Um, so members, 10.5. Uh, I will ask, which is to note the representation review options paper and to authorise the Chief Executive Officer to make editorial amendments. And I will look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. And a seconder, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Only, only briefly, um, I understand this is uh, the, the, the process uh, in relation to representation review and that it's not the role of elected members to uh, lobby uh, the community or to express a view. Our role is to wait and receive. This was explained in the briefing and um, I'm happy to amend the motion. Thank you. Councillor Kerr, did you wish to speak? No. Members? Councillor Martin? Uh, only a question, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, this uh, review, as you know, was uh, published last week and some of our ratepayers have had the opportunity to look at it, particularly in North Adelaide, where they're concerned about representation. Um, and in uh, uh, speaking with uh, a couple of ratepayers, the question that was asked of me was, what do you think? 
Um, one of those people was a, a lawyer and to whom I responded, well, I'm, I'm advised that I am not allowed to influence this discussion in any way. Uh, and the response was, well, no, um, unless there's a specific piece of legislation that says you shouldn't, then your electors have a right to know what you think on this particular issue. So my question is, what is that piece of the legislation that says thou shalt not discuss these proposals with uh, any ratepayer? Thank you. Um, Acting CA, if I could ask you to answer that question. Uh, through the presiding member, um, if you look at page two of the report, um, the review is required to be conducted in accordance with section 12 of the Local Government Act. Uh, which bit of section 12 of the Local Government Act says thou shalt not as an elected member discuss this with ratepayers? That's, that's all I want to know. Um, and if I can be provided with that, then I'll be able to fend off ratepayers with questions. Through the presiding member, I'll take that on notice and provide that tomorrow with some appropriate wording for all of you to be able to conduct um, yourselves in accordance with the uh, legislation in the coming weeks. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go to Councillor Mackey to sum up. Councillor Mackey, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Thank you, members. The second item uh, for which we have counsel in the chamber is uh, is in confidence. So I'll seek leave of the chamber to go to item 12.2.1. Councillor Martin. Um, I wish to move an alternative motion, Lord Mayor, that this matter um, be heard in public, not in confidence. I'm actually seeking lead of, leave of the meeting at the moment, so if I can actually just uh, ask the meeting, may I bring the item 12.2.1 forward, and I'll ask by show of hands, seeking leave of the meeting to bring that forward. Two, three, four, five, six. Thank you, members. Uh, so we'll bring that forward, and um, you wish to move an alternate motion? motion. Yes. Which is Councillor Martin? Uh, that 12.2.1 is considered in public, not in confidence. And do you have a seconder? Councillor Moran? Councillor Martin? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, look, um, I am going to be uh, careful about what I say because this is a sensitive issue. But, Lord Mayor, uh, it is also a public issue. Uh, on fe February 20th, uh, the advertiser reported this culture report, quote, was ordered by members of the dominant Team Adelaide faction, close quotes, uh, quote, into the adverse impact poor behaviour is having on administration staff, close quotes. It then went on to say uh, Team Adelaide is constantly having fights with and it names Councillor Moran and me. Um, the article and our names, Martin and Moran, were referenced again in a column in the advertiser, in the advertiser a few days later, written by David Penberthy. And this too was referenced by uh, Councillor Abrahimzade in a social media post viewed by hundreds of uh, influential South Australians on that day. So um, uh, Councillor Moran and I, and to a lesser extent, Councillor Hyde, have been profoundly linked to allegations of poor behaviour, allegations the, uh, the advertiser says um, uh, are so serious that the organisation is contemplating sending the report to ICAC. And now it's proposed that this council, this council dominated by the same group who the advertiser says were responsible for this report, uh, this council is going to close its doors and consider this in confidence. Um, while I and the others that I've named uh, are linked to serious allegations, allegations the advertiser says worthy of referring to ICAC, and they're left hanging there, just in the air. And I can't defend myself. Councillor Moran can't defend herself. I, I haven't discussed it with Councillor Hyde, so I don't know how he feels. 
But a secret meeting in the eyes, I contend, of many people will simply uh, further um, uh, cast some shadow over our reputations. Um, it will also possibly, in my view, lead some people to say, well, the council's just sweeping it under the carpet, or it's come to some other conclusion that we have no vision of. And that just further compounds, I think, um, the damage that is done. Now, I want the chance to defend myself in public. I, I want the public to know what this is all about. And the only way for that to happen is for it not to be in confidence. It has to be in public. This is reputations you're talking about. This is people. And this going behind closed doors to reach some conclusion that um, people who read the advertiser, who've been on social media, expect some sort of conclusion for, to deny them that, to deny them an account of where this is going is, in my mind, uh, just an action this council should not be associated with. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, has a seconder? Yes, th thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, um, Councillor Martin and I have been named in the advertiser. Um, I don't know, but somebody has obviously seen the report um, and uh, there's a lot of word on the street um, who, who, who it targets. And while I suspect or could postulate that the initial motion was targeting certain non-team members, that is, I haven't seen the report and even the confidential thing doesn't show me the report. Um, so I don't refer know. to what's in confidence, Councillor Moran. Well, isn't that a negative that I'm not? not okay, um, <laughs> makes it a bit hard, doesn't it? Um, not in our electorate have I received any um, kickback, but certainly on the broader community, um, being named as device of a troublemaker, holding the city back, I have received a lot of social media negativity. As I said, not from the City of Adelaide. So I think my position with my electorate who know, who know me very well and know that um, I work hard, I'm not divisive. Um, and so I have no problem there. But in the broader community, we have been slammed as being named. Now, it's not just Councillor um, Abraham today that mentioned it on uh, social media, it's other councillors too. Um, Hold on a second. Point of clarification, Lord Mayor. I don't know what uh, these two councillors are referring to. I've never named anyone on any social media post. So, can I get some Thank clarification you. on Thank that? Thank you, councillor. Sure, happy to give it to you. Yeah. Oh, I've seen um, so, I think it's important if we can't hear this in public, for some reason, I think we need to delay this um, so that the report can be divided and we look at it that way. I feel that I can't participate if this isn't done in public and I will excuse myself. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Lord Mayor, um, uh, a report that was always going to be confidential uh, shouldn't suddenly uh, be moved uh, to be uh, brought out of confidence uh, simply because a one or two or a number of councillors believe uh, they're feeling the heat. The, pro the reason for the confidence clearly uh, was to protect the administration. Uh, you want uh, not to cruel uh, the ability for people, regular folk who may be affected, who may be bullied or maybe uh, whatever, you want them to be able to come forward. Um, I think a decision to move this out of confidence uh, is not going to give them that comfort. In fact, will have uh, in effect chilling uh, any future contributions to such uh, reports. It's a very important report. It is about uh, the welfare of the staff. It is about the welfare of the staff first and foremost. This is not about the welfare of councillors. Uh, I think it ought to remain in confidence at the very least until a redacted version may uh, come out, which at least protects the administration of whom this is supposed to be all about. Okay. Um, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hyde. Sorry. Sorry, Councillor Martin. Um, I was waving at me. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. I've just been reading through everything. It's, it's hard to ask a question about yes. material confidence. But, Careful. Um, yeah. Um, is it, is, is it, would it, could it be the case or could it be construed that by voting to, and I want to hear this publicly, but um, by voting to not go into confidence, well, my first question is if we don't go into confidence, do we then progress to this item? 
12.2.1, what does it get called? Acting C. Through the presiding member, the legal advice is very clear. I'll be withdrawing the report. Okay, and so, and, right, okay. But if I vote to hear it in public, um, uh, I wouldn't necessarily be breaking, and councillors would not be actually breaking the law by voting to proceed in public. Um, you would just be pulling the report, is that? Acting C. The legal advice is really clear on the three grounds on which to consider this item in confidence. If council chooses to vote to consider this item in public, I will withdraw it. So I'm just doing somersaults in my mind. So it's not actually illegal to, to vote to hold it in confidence? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Members, I will properly this time. I don't think my glasses are working properly tonight. Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, I'd like to offer a personal explanation first, uh, Lord Mayor. I, it's been suggested that the veracity of what I was saying about Councillor Abraham today is not correct. Um, on a post on LinkedIn, he has uh, pasted the David Penberthy column, which contains the allegations I referred to against Councillor Moran and myself. And he says, this is just one of the many reasons we need significant local government reform. You only need a couple of elected members to misbehave to make the higher, entire council seem dysfunctional and toxic. And it goes on. There is no problem, no noise. Um, this is old Adelaide versus new Adelaide. Now, it is disingenuous, disingenuous in the extreme to be saying, oh, what article, what article? And, and that's, that's the sort of thing I'm dealing about. No, no, I'm no, I'm no, now, I'm now. Point of clarification, Lord Mayor, I haven't named anyone in that post. It's reposted a post. It's reposted a post. Okay, Councillor Martin. Reposted the allegation. And it, by any definition, he is repeating the allegation. Now, Lord Mayor, um, I hear what the administration is saying. It, it will withdraw this matter if there is a vote to hear it in public. Uh, I am not concerned about that because then it's up to the administration to bring it back to council and it can do so by way of a special council meeting or any other kind of council meeting in a form that would allow the matter to be heard in public. It would say to those ratepayers who are concerned about the sorts of things that Councillor Abraham today and the advertiser are saying, it would say to them, this council is being open, it is dealing with this in a public and transparent way. Now, if that is a slightly redacted way, it is still a way of dealing with it publicly. And it allows us to be able to say to people, well, this is how the matter is being dealt with and this is the next step. Not that, that it just disappears into the ether with the allegations standing. <coughs> now, I urge members, you may well find yourself in this position at some stage, and it is important for all of us to understand in public life, when there are serious allegations against us, we at least have the right to let people know what's happening, how it's been dealt with, and what the progress is. That's all I'm asking. Not, not that this matter goes away, that this matter is dealt with in public. And if the administration withdraws that tonight and brings it back next week or the next council meeting, then that's something I'm entirely comfortable with. But I am not comfortable. Uh, in fact, I feel, uh, frankly, um, quite sick to the stomach that this whole matter is being um, going, going to be heard behind the drawn curtains. Okay, members, uh, on that, we are voting whether the item be heard in public. Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Members, therefore, I will go forward with the request for consideration in confidence. Division, certainly. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing. Talk names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims, Councillor Mackey and Councillor Martin. Members, uh, I'll ask for uh, item 12.2.1, the culture investigation report, uh, to be heard in confidence. So I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and second to Councillor Knoll. Uh, did you, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Other than those that have before, if not, we'll go to the move to sum up. 
Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ho, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Canole, and Councillor Abraham today. Sorry, so, so it's not carried. Um, that's, I've got casting votes, so I will ask that it's heard in confidence. Thank you, members. Uh, so, members of public and staff, uh, if you are not associated with the item 12.2.1, I'll ask you now to please leave the council chamber. Uh, the streaming will cease while council considers the item on the agenda and the meeting will reopen and streaming recommence at the conclusion of the last confidential item. Before we go into confidence, members, given we have one other item in confidence. Do we wish to do that at the same time? I'll look to the meeting for leave of the meeting to do it at the same time. If not, we'll go back into confidence later. Uh, members, meeting. Um, so we've got 12.1.1, um, which is the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority, um, which we can deal at the same time. So members with leave of the chamber, if I could see a show of hands, we'll do that at the same time. So, members, I will ask for a mover for 12.1.1 to go into confidence. Thank you, Councillor Canole, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Uh, members, sorry, Councillor Martin. Yes, uh, Lord Mayor, I um, have sought advice from the administration in regard to a potential conflict of interest. Um, the administration says um, that the matter that is to come before us now does not expressly implicate me. Um, but that is not a judgment that I can make. That's a uh, judgment that is made by the administration. The administration advises that the decision about whether or not I have a conflict of interest uh, is mine uh, to make on account of the public reporting. And if I am concerned, it is open. Sorry, to we are talking about the Appler advice. No, no, uh, that's I, what I'm. That's what I'm talking about right now. That's what we just moved. Well, that, so sorry, you've reversed the order. No, I've just said we we have actually gone uh, going into confidence for 12.2.1, and I have asked leave of the chamber to also deal with 12.1.1 at the same time, which is the advice of Appler. No, and that no is, but I, I understand that, Lord Mayor. I thought you. No, that's what I was asking for people to vote on, and you put your hand up. Okay. Sorry, members, I'm asking. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Can I just ask um, about that? I don't care if you do that for it all, but the rationale was because there were people, um, professional people waiting. I don't see any professional people from APLA. No, it's just that to go into confidence a second time. It was just that we could deal with the matter fairly quickly while we're in confidence. That's all. Members to the vote, those, those in favour? Sorry, what we those against whether we go into co we also address 12.1.1 in confidence okay. thank you members
and then I'll try and find my place on the agenda. I think it's page 214. Thank you. Thank you. Before you start streaming again, members. Yes. Uh, thank you, members. 17.3, Councillor Sims, motion on notice motions. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I move that Council request that administration publish the following material on the City of Adelaide website. One, a list of motions on notice from elected members and the outcomes of these from this term of council to date, and two, a monthly summary of motions on notice and the outcomes of these from this meeting onwards. Members look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. This is a pretty um, straightforward uh, initiative, um, Lord Mayor. The, the reason for uh, me proposing this is often members of the community um, ask for updates on council um, initiatives or council law um, initiatives. Members might be aware that I do a regular newsletter, which I publish on a website, um, so that members of the community know what I'm um, doing and. Uh, whether or not my motions have been successful in the council chamber and, and so on. But I think what's lacking is a central repository of councillor initiatives. And that's what I'm proposing, just that that information be recorded on the council website so that members of the community can easily access that and um, find out whether the motion was carried um, and see who is um, moving what, who's initiating what ideas. Now, some members will say, oh, well, that's already in the minutes, but the reality is, of course, that members of the community are not always going to be trawling through minutes, trying to find um, council resolutions and so on. This is putting it all together in um, one place that is easily accessible. So um, I think it would be good practice for the council to adopt this. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Members? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Oh, so, sorry, Councillor Abraham today. Just My apologies. Um, I just had a quick question, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, does this have any um, staffing implications at all? I have lost my acting C. So. Uh, and my second question was um, uh, the, the mover of the motion might be able to answer this. So, is this uh, motions on notice only or uh, without notice as well? Um, I will go to. Sorry, acting C. I could go to Justin to answer that. Just wait here for a moment. Um, if, if I may, yeah. Sorry, if I go to um, through through you, Lord Mayor. Uh, yes, the, the motion is for all motions, so it would be motions on notice and motions uh, without notice. Uh, and we're suggesting that we could bring that back prior to the April ordinary meeting, uh, but there would be staffing considerations in, in terms of preparing that and uh, publishing it on the web. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Yeah, just for the um, purpose of the like the local government act and that sort of thing, I understand that um, uh, recommendations actually also count as motions as well. We just call them recommendations. Is that that's always in my discussions with governance? That's always been the no. Just ask for some advice on that. Um, Certainly, thank you, Lord Mayor. We would take this to mean motions coming from council members only, okay, not right. not decisions arising from recommendations. What what about where those? Sorry, through you, Lord Mayor. What about where those recommendations have been substantially changed and they're no longer administration's words or intent? Um, I think the uh, the question was answered. It would just be motions coming through under section 17 on the okay. agenda, oh, okay. and um, and 18. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Sims to sum up. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Members to the vote. Those in favour. Oops, my apologies, those in favour. Six, that's carried, thank you. Uh, members, uh, item 17.4, Councillor Mackey, supporting community. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, I move that uh, Council recognises and models best practice community leadership and the fostering of a culture for philanthropy by advocating and promoting community and cultural volunteering and financial giving. Two, recognising that many elected members choose to support community through financial giving and non-financial memberships of charity and community and cultural benefit organisations suggest that members promote this information on their social media sites in an appropriate way. And three, request administration consider ways that similar information could be added to the City of Adelaide website 
and social media platforms to demonstrate community leadership and promote a philanthropy culture. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mackey, I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Mackey, if you'd like to speak to your um, motion. Um, thank you again through you, Lord Mayor. Um, I hope that this is fairly self-explanatory um, and in fact, this is really building inspiration from your recent um, public uh, uh, revelation, sharing of, the, of your generosity uh, in relation to um, uh, community benefit organisations, be they arts and culture or, or other forms of charity. Um, I endorse that, I, I embrace that, I, I attempt to practise that myself. And I think as the civic leaders of our capital city, uh, we have an opportunity to, uh, to demonstrate that and hopefully inspire similar acts of engagement and generosity and volunteering uh, in other members of our community. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak? I'll reserve my life with me. Members, I, I wish that I could inspire you all on so many fronts, including donations. That's great. Councillor Mackey, I believe you can sum up. Uh, sum up. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, Councillor Sims, 17.5. Business class air travel. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I move that Council adopts a policy position prohibiting the booking of business class air travel for elected members and administration while an official City of Adelaide business. And we'll look for a seconder, members. Councillor Mackey. Thanks, Lord Mayor. The reason for um, this uh, motion is we have had some discussions about um, Council's challenging financial um, situation. And whilst, of course, I'm not suggesting that this motion is going to um, address or rectify that in, in a significant way, what it does do, I think, is send a, a sensible message to the community that, uh, you know, we as an organisation are, are tightening our belts and also, um, I think, reflecting community standards in terms of what they um, expect of us. Um, I think, you know, there's lots of um, politicians that travel um, business class. It's always been my view that um, when you're using um, public money, though, that it should only be um, economy class. Um, and uh, that's why I'm proposing this. I think it's a pretty a straightforward initiative. I'm hoping um, everybody will get behind it. Councillor Kerr. Oh, sorry, Councillor Mackey was the second. My apologies. Thanks, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, only briefly, look, I've, I've uh, held executive positions in the um, South Australian public sector um, where there, is, there are varying regimes with regard to entitlement to business class travel. Um, I have uh, enjoyed the occasional uh, self-funded business class top up or using points, uh, but um, the standard is um, for economy travel, especially within Australia. Um, I, I support the, the intent and spirit of uh, uh, Councillor Sims' motion. Councillor Kerr. Uh, Lord Mayor, I uh, propose an amendment, uh, and that is to remove the words and administration uh, from the motion um, and seek a second uh, purpose of debate. That fails due no, to having no, no second we'll take, uh, take debate. Take Thank debate. you, Councillor Abraham, today. Uh, Lord Mayor, I, I move this amendment because I think that um, we've got to be careful. I think there's more damage potentially uh, done than good uh, in this motion. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, going on from the previous point I made about encouraging regular folk uh, to uh, conduct public service, that I think equally applies to encouraging people across the board for uh, the, the best people out there uh, to, to work in local government. Um, I think that it's uh, at the moment, we, this council hasn't probably seen the best outcomes in terms of encouraging people uh, to work in, uh, in uh, local government. Um, I think that it would be a mistake. There are other ways uh, that we, other avenues that councillors have to keep accountability across the administration where we employ the CEO uh, in terms of fiscal rectitude uh, and particularly at this large S with uh, overseas travel. What we don't want though is good people to say, well, I, this is job running, uh, a senior position in the, in the city of Adelaide, a CEO position or, or something uh, of that level, uh, but I'm going to be forced to travel economy uh, overseas uh, potentially. 
Um, but but I, I may be potentially forced to travel uh, economy overseas. Um, you're shaking your head, Lord Mayor. Is that, are you disagreeing with me? Or? Oh, okay, what, what does that mean, with respect? Um, so, okay, I, I take you disagree. I'd love to hear your comments uh, in, in repost to this, but my position stands um, that I think that this, this, would be, this would be a chilling effect. I think that some people may think, you know, a lot of people don't travel particularly overseas because of the prospect of economy class uh, in general. Um, so I think we've got to be careful on balance. Um, let's ensure that, that we as elected members uh, uh, don't do this, but let's look at other ways of keeping the administration uh, accountable. Councillor today. Uh, I do have one quick question, uh, Lord Mayor, through you. Um, do you know whether if we've had any uh, any executives travel on business class in the past? I wouldn't be able to answer that, Acting CEO. Uh, through the presiding member, um, I can only speak on behalf of myself. I can't speak on behalf of the CEO. Um, if I have travelled business class overseas, it's because, similar to Councillor Mackey, I've paid for that out of my own pocket. I have got Councillor Martin and then Councillor Canal. Councillor um, Martin. Yeah, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, um, I'm quite perplexed at some of the things that I've been hearing here today about ordinary folk. And, and <laughs> I've come, I've come to the view that uh, some of the elected members wouldn't know an ordinary person if they fell over. Um, I cannot, I cannot imagine a circumstance in which regular folk, regular folk, would be deterred from working here at the City of Adelaide because they can't fly business class. Lord Mayor, point of clarification. Point of clarification. Yes, sir. Point of clarification. Uh, the comment was good people should be encouraged to work in local government uh, in relation to this motion, not ordinary people. Oh, I'm sorry. I've learned even more from there. There are good people and there are ordinary folk. Um, it is just the most absurd proposition that's being put to this chamber by, uh, and I am not a weasel. Council, I, I, council, I members, you. members, Councillor Martin. Lord yeah. Mayor, I've just been called a weasel. I'm sorry, and, I did not hear that. Councillor Kerra. I retract, Lord Mayor. Uh, Lord Mayor, I, 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 I just can't imagine how anyone uh, could suggest that good people, um, people would not be attracted to work here because they cannot fly business class. Uh, honestly, I, I have not heard such a preposterous proposition in a long time. Um, you know, one of the things uh, about this place, and I, I thought that we Councillor had Councillor Mountain, that. we are speaking to the motion before you. Yeah, and that's exactly what I'm saying, mm -hmm. Lord Mayor. We demonstrated, so we're talking about business class travel for We demonstrated time. earlier tonight that we were interested in ensuring that there was a view of this council that we weren't interested in um, the gravy train or that allegation of snouts in the trough um, because we were here for public service. And I think that's a principle that extends to this matter as well. Um, you know, years ago, I travelled uh, economy class on a plane uh, and sat next to a politician, uh, a well-known federal politician, who made the point of saying he had declined his entitlement of first class travel because, uh, or rather business class travel, because it didn't pass the pub test. And it doesn't pass the pub test. Pub test, not anymore. Most commercial organisations did away with business tra travel years ago. In fact, um, I can remember it happening uh, when I was working for an organisation 25 years ago. It was suddenly decided that it was not an appropriate thing for executives, no matter how junior, to fly at the front end of the plane. Uh, and despite that, uh, there are those who uh, insist that unless they go business class, and we've heard this here tonight, unless they go business class, they won't go anywhere. Now, that... I don't think we've heard that tonight, yes, Mr. Martin, but that. that's the time. Thank you. Nobody said that. And, no, um, I understand, Lord Mayor. Nobody am did I, say that. Am so. I allowed just a few seconds for the interruption from Councillor Kerry? Members, leave the chamber. I need a show of hands if we're going to have an extension of time. 
Lord Mayor, I'm not asking for an extension of time. I'm asking for the time that was taken. Yes, by it's, the it's an extension of time. So, <laughs> members, I just need to see a show of hands, please, if we want an extension of time. Thank you. No? No, thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Moran. Uh, yes. I don't know where to start. Really good and ordinary people do fly ordinary passage on planes. Uh, the only time I've ever dabbled with uh, business class was when I was lucky enough to have enough points to do one of the sections. Um, I always fly ordinary, normal class with all the normal, good, ordinary people. Every other organisation insists that if you'd like, if you're so wealthy that you'd like to upgrade it, um, that's open to you. But um, to say that people won't go to things because they can't travel business class is a ridiculous suggestion. In these austere times where um, we are trying to tighten our belts and show the community that we too look after the public purse and think of them when 99% when of people going overseas travel, don't travel business class. Um, and it, you can do it, Councillor Kerr. It is possible to, to sit there with your knees jammed around your ears and still get to Europe. Done it many a time. Um, I remember Councillor Henningsen doing a six-day turnaround on council business to London, both ways, not in business class. It is possible to do it, Councillor Carer, and I think this council should lead by example, <coughs> as other organisations have done, and not go on the gra gra gravy train and go the, the highly lux luxurious um, uh, business class. It, it just beggars belief that good people, not even ordinary people, just good people will insist on business class. It is ludicrous and it's, it, it, it's, it, I'm not saying it is snouts in the trough, but it certainly would seem to the ordinary good people a very snouty thing to do. Councillor Canole. I've got a question. I have me. Councillor Canole first and then oh, I'll have you, yeah. Councillor Sorry. Thank you. Um, of course, I, I, mean, I agree as, as uh, councillors that uh, I mean, uh, business as uh, economy class is certainly a way that we could go. I have a problem only in the fact that we do run a large organisation which does do negotiations. And I see here that there is the policy within uh, uh, the guidelines which states that it's about flying economy and, and certainly within Australia, that is, uh, you know, that would be uh, the right thing to do. There's, I can only imagine there will be only occasions and that's why you would give the CEO um, the opportunity to, to make a decision is that I know uh, that there are times when you are, uh, where you need to, if you're going to do a negotiation, etc. Um, going in uh, and you only have a couple of days turnaround, the, 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 uh, you arrive in much better shape if it's going to be a significant, uh, um, you know, uh, well, if you're paying them, <laughs> you want them in and out. The point is that they, uh, you know, they do need to be fresh for those sort of negotiations. So you do need the ability to say, yes, this is important. Yes, this is a, uh, would uh, be a benefit to the city and uh, to have that flexibility to do that. Under normal circumstances, I can't see there's a need, but you still want to be able to say, uh, we have to do this, a significant negotiation, it's a day after uh, you know, I arrive, uh, I need to be fresh, I need to be uh, on game, because otherwise you, you are starting behind. And I think those sorts of things are important, um, you know, when it's appropriate, of course, and those, I could imagine too many situations like that. Um, and I think it, it should be at least that option for that, that one specific uh, need, because we do run a large organisation that does make large deals and things. And uh, if there's an occasion for that, you don't want to inhibit our ability to do a really good job by having your staff um, jet lagged like after a late meeting on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Councillor Kerry had a question. Just, just, a couple, uh, just two brief questions. Um, in general, given that we only employ the CEO, uh, is this motion ultra-virus? Acting CE. Can we direct administration or simply the CE? Uh, through the presiding member, it's a policy position, so um, I would thought that that's.
So um, the policy sits with the uh, CEO, so that's appropriate for a policy position to be adopted and for the CEO to enact it via the um, policy. Okay. My second question is to the acting CEO through you, Lord Mayor, and, and that is in the acting CEO's opinion. Um, would this, uh, were, were the uh, motion to be defeated, the amendment to be defeated, and the original motion carried, that is to say, were this proscription be enacted on all administration, uh, would there, is, is it feasible uh, there, that there would be, um, that, that there, if, if, if I may continue without being interrupted, uh, if it is, uh, is it feasible? Lord, Lord Councillor Mayor, Martin, Lord. stop interrupting. I'm trying to hear what the question is. Uh, is it feasible? that there may be undue uh, disadvantage conferred on the City of Adelaide uh, in circumstances as outlined by Councillor Canole, uh, where a CEO may need to uh, be refreshed, a CEO may need to have access to the internet uh, on uh, the flight or other such circumstances. Is this something that would confer a disadvantage on the City of Adelaide in uh, negotiations? Acting CEO. Uh, through the presiding member, I think the challenge is section 2.2 .2 in the administration comment. So I'd need to check in the past, I have been aware that um, requirements for the CEO to travel business class have been contractual of na in nature. So um, there could be a possibility that by adopting policy position could be in breach of an employment contract. So that bit I would need to um, take Good some advice, advice on. Um, I have Councillor Hyde, then Councillor Sims, then Councillor Martin. Could I could I just ask also um, the uh, to the mover the prohibiting of booking the way it's written there? It actually would prohibit anybody from using points to upgrade. Is that in the intention of the mover? Because it's, no, it's that's, that's is it the prohibiting the provision of business yeah, cards or the booking of? I have no problem with um, a, a member or a staff member using points to upgrade if they wish to do so. I have absolutely no problem with that at all. Okay. What I was seeking to deal with is the use of rate pay money. That's why I use the yep. term booking. Okay. Meaning. Sorry, that's just to clarify yeah. your meaning within that. Well, well, Mayor, we are just talking about what's going on. This is about elected members, it's not about the administration. All the questioning is around the administration. That's because, That's because it's actually an amendment. The amendment is to rule out administration and to apply this only Correct. To That's correct. Sorry, Councillor Martin. I'm actually going to Councillor Sim, uh, Councillor Hyde, then Councillor Sims, then, ca then you will get a chance. Councillor Hyde. Uh, my question, Lord Mayor, is in a similar vein um, uh, to yours. The um, and I'm casting my mind back, I think, where you had a sponsored trip to go to a conference. Um, you were on official City of Adelaide business, and I can't recall if you flew business class or not, but I do recall that we didn't pay for the flight. So would this actually, and is it the intent of the mover to then restrict even, even, when, even when business class travel has been paid for by a third party to then, to then but it says that you, no business class air travel for elected members while on official city of Adelaide business. So just is that the, would that be the interpretation? So um, my understanding from the question I just asked, Councillor Sims, is if we are, it's, it's the the provision of a business class airfare by council. Is that correct? And if so. The, so just asking the mover and that he has if, if I could just ask a, a secondary question, again, coming from your first line of questioning, the um, uh, if staff fly economy in within you know, or elected members or whoever flies economy um, and their frequent flyer point number is used, they're then able to accumulate points uh, to their account at the ratepayer's expense. Um, it was a practice that was actually ruled out by the federal parliament uh, I want to say 2008 or 9. Um, so would it be the case that administration would not allow you to upgrade using points that have been otherwise garnered through the use of I don't know. domestic I can through the presiding member, I've got a feeling there were some FBT provisions associated and that was stopped quite a, um, a couple of years ago. So, so through Lord Mayor, staff no longer accumulate frequent flyer points by virtue of travel that the city is paying for. Acting C. Through the presiding member, I'm pretty confident that that's 
Not the case. Okay. Sorry, that is the case. That they can't purchase. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sims, you had a question for you, Councillor. Oh, thanks, Lord Mayor. It wasn't a question, just a, a comment in relation to the amendment. But look, I, I, I'm a bit um, surprised by this. I've never seen people um, fighting so hard around trying to sort of retain um, access to business class um, travel. You know, a bit like Game of Thrones, Lord Mayor. People desperate to retain oh, those uh, those plush chairs in um, business oh, class. Point of clarification. But, but, with respect, Lord Mayor, we're not. We are not claiming first class travel. That is a misrepresentation of the amendment. The amendment is about administration, not elected members. No. It's the no. This is actually about elected members and not looking at administration. That is the amendment that we're looking at at the That's moment. No. What I'm saying so, is the so suggestion, the no, the suggestion yeah, that we're fighting to retain first class travel for ourselves yeah, is a misrepresentation Thank you. of yep. this amendment. Yep. Thanks. Um, Councillor Curate, illuminating as always. Um, Lord Mayor, I think um, really we're making a bit of a meal of an entree um, here. Um, and you get both of those in first class travel, I understand. Um, it's not quite the same um, in the economy, which is. Um, um, this is a question, uh, Councillor Sims, because you've no, already well, spoken, unless you're something I'm else. I'm speaking to the amendment, Lord Mayor. I've okay, had an opportunity thank to you. speak to the amendment. Um, look, I, I don't think this is a big deal. Um, and seems to me to be a pretty straightforward uh, policy position, recognising um, the position that Council is in at the moment and, and changing community standards. I'm certainly not trying to prohibit were someone to be offered uh, the example Councillor Hyde uh, provided around a complimentary trip uh, to undertake Council business. I have absolutely no issue with that, nor do I have any issue with an elected member using their own points to um, upgrade. I don't have a problem with that or a um, member of administration doing so. Um, but uh, I think you know it's it's a fairly straightforward proposition what I'm seeking to uh, to achieve, and I encourage members to vote for the motion as uh, originally crafted. So, councillor. So, councillor Martin, you have a question. You've spoken to the amendment? No, I haven't spoken to the amendment. I've spoken to the substantive. Sorry, I've just asked Jenny because I've lost track. You've spoken to the substantive. Yeah. No, no, the amendment was moved by Councillor Kira. Um, yes, it was moved by Councillor Kira, then seconded by Councillor Abraham, then you spoke to it, then Councillor Moran, then Councillor Knoll. And then it was amended by Councillor Kira. Oh, uh, that you've already spoken to it since the amendment's been put forward. Um, Councillor Moran. Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Moran, you have a question? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, to um, the Acting CEO. This motion, uh, this amendment, if, part, if um, defeated, would, it, would that prohibit Council if the, rhetorically, if, if um, the CEO had to go to London, Paris, so forth, this uh, wouldn't prohibit the council then deciding to upgrade, um, upgrade into business class, would it? Would it? If it's a policy position acting CEO. Uh, yeah. Through the presiding member, um, I think it would be um, particularly onerous for um, CEO travel to now start to be reported into the chamber if there was a, um, a need for the CEO to fly a different class than what the policy position is. Um, I wouldn't want to be um, committing to doing that on a regular basis, but noting it is COVID and noting that the reality of any international travel in the uh, near future, um, it's probably unlikely. Um, and as I did mention earlier, um, I do have, I will need to um, take um, some advice after the meeting if this is passed, um, if it reverts back and is passed in relation to contractual arrangements uh, that the council has with the CEO. Okay, can I ask another question then? Okay, we'll leave the, leaving the CEO aside, if a, a EM needed to travel to Europe and our policy was that um, <clears throat> economy class was the, you know, the standard, 
there'd be nothing to stop, and this is a question, nothing to stop council then saying, well, in this situation, we will allow the EM, we can vote to allow them to go business class in certain circumstances. Through the, anyway, yeah, through the yeah. presiding member, um, all um, travel for mm -hmm. council members and Lord Mayor is reported to the so chamber, to the whether chamber. it's interstate no, or I'm overseas. About, I'm talking about... Um, so you could make a decision. Leadership team, not the councils. The councils are still in there, so we're not talking about that. Administration. We're talking about if the council decided, obviously the CEO has yep. a different contract. If, for instance, you guys wanted to go business class because, as Franz has said, maybe it's disadvantage, it's a short turnaround, um, there's nothing, is there anything to stop the council then saying, on this trip, we will pay for that person, even though the policy is um, economy class. There's nothing to stop, is there, that we can say, well, in this circumstance, we do uh, resolve to allow. So through the presiding member, that wouldn't be brought into the chamber for a decision? It, it's, it doesn't come to the chamber, it goes to the CEO. So any any travel by the administration is approved by the CEO or the um, directors, it doesn't come to the chamber. So but it would could, prohibit. It? Mm, there's no, sorry, acting CEO. Through the Pizzardi member, there's um, no no requirement to do that now, and I wouldn't feel comfortable seen your hand, putting in a new moment. policy position that requires um, travel for staff to be endorsed by um, council. <coughs> no, so I think okay. you're mistaken, my, my question. I'm not no, saying... No, I, I think the question is, saying, could it, oh, is there anything to it. stop it from coming in? And the answer is, it wouldn't come in because it's a decision of the CEO. And that's that's how that works. Um, I have Councillor Hyde and then Councillor Martin. Councillor Hyde. And I we put the motion. Uh, you actually only answer six, so I... What is the motion? The amendment. The amendment. You can put the amendment that we delete administration. You're all talking about the administration. Um, because we're deleting the administration as an amendment. That's why we're talking about the administration. I'm looking for a seconder if we want the motion to be put. Councillor Ho. Uh, members to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. The amendment is to be put. Members, those in favour, those against. Hang on, Councillor Mackey, you voted twice. My apologies. So we are putting the amendment. So I'm asking members, those in favour, hands please. Those against. Councillor Ho and Councillor Kira, I need your vote. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, <laughs> we're voting for the amendment. I'm, I'm so sorry. No, we're voting against. Okay, okay. We're going to go a third time. Members, we're voting for the amendment. Those in favour? Those against? Um, I am going to vote in favour of the amendment. Division. division. Council members, a division has been called on the amendment. Will those in favour of the amendment please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Ho, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Carer, Councillor Canal, and Councillor Abrahim today. <laughs> So, members, that now becomes the substantive. Councillor Hyde. I move we put the motion. I would look for a seconder. Councillor Knoll. Members, that the motion be put. You're voting that the motion be put. Those against, the motion is to be put. Members, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Business class, why 
Members, item 17.6 has been deferred to April. Uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor is away tonight. That takes us to 17.7. .7. Councillor Abraham is yeah, Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll move the motion as printed and seek a second. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, the uh, motion is um, fairly straightforward. Uh, I want us to be on the front foot when it comes to a, uh, a, a couple of uh, milestones that we've got coming up later this year and uh, one of those uh, significant um, uh, uh, milestones is the, um, the ending of um, job people by federal government. So uh, as we know, our uh, uh, businesses here in the city uh, have suffered uh, and I'm sure, and I know that we're not the only capital city, Lord Mayor, that's been hurt by this. Um, I hear that uh, the city of Sydney and the city of Melbourne, with the uh, lockdowns that they had, uh, they're also suffering. So uh, I know that as a capital city, we're not the only ones here in Australia that are suffering. But I want us to be um, um, ahead of the game, uh, on the front foot, uh, and to really think about this when we're preparing our, uh, our budget this year. Councillor Hyde, Councillor uh, Kerr, and then Councillor Mackey. Oh, just very briefly speak in favour of this. I think it's a good thing for us to do. It's a good piece of advocacy. And I would, um, I would uh, suggest or uh, um, uh, stress to administration, particularly that we uh, give some thought and consideration to uh, bricks and mortar businesses, which are not hospitality, uh, but which are everything else. You your sole practitioners, whatever you know, accountants and uh, vendors of uh, various products. All of that. Um, I think there is probably um, a sense that 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 uh, cohort um, you know, could do with help uh, alongside all the help that's been coming towards hospitality. Thank you, Councillor Kerry. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, as a former long-time uh, business operator in the capital city, I, I also am happy to support uh, Councillor Abraham today's motion, but I wonder if you might just consider a slight variation uh, in regard to uh, paragraph three. Uh, uh, provides targeted support to stimulate blah, 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 blah. Um, would, would you consider among the incorporation at the beginning of in consultation with AEDA, our Economic Development Authority? Um, so that it reads, stimulate the City of Adelaide through City of Adelaide in consultation with the Adelaide Economic yeah. Development yeah. Programs? Yeah. Yeah. Are you happy with that? Thank you. In consultation with? In consultation with. Yep. If I might then speak uh, in, in support of this. Um, I, I, I also just want to foreshadow there is a motion without notice that I circulated to elected members uh, and the acting chief executive earlier today. They, they speak to each other uh, and I think they speak to each other in a way that um, uh, will need to be considered in a further report, but the budget process is in fact you know, the subject of future uh, uh, um, debate and uh, mm -hmm. consideration. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham to do some up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Can that be recorded as unanimous, please? Um, we go to 17. Point Eight, Councillor Sims, unsolicited proposals. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move that Council excludes the parklands from the City of Adelaide's unsolicited proposals guideline and notes that any proposals of which Council are notified in relation to development in the parklands are considered by APLA prior to the committee and Council and included on the published agendas. And Councillor Moran has seconded you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. <clears throat> Look, um, Lord Mayor, this uh, motion is seeking to bring to a close what I think has been a protracted um, saga for this council. Um, members will uh, recall, and certainly the community um, knows all too well, uh, the fiasco that was the um, Crows unsolicited bid for the Adelaide Parklands, one that was shrouded um, in secrecy. Um, and that was largely because of uh, the unsolicited bids uh, proposal guideline and the way in which that has curtailed um, debate around public space. Because we know as part of the um, unsolicited bids uh, process 
that the uh, intellectual property of the proponent is elevated above um, considerations around um, the public's right to know. And that really was one of the elements that deeply concerned me um, about the Crow's proposal. That was a terrible process for our public space. And uh, Lord Mayor, I think it's appalling that in um, a democracy, there can be discussions about public land, public space that happen behind closed doors, where you literally have private corporations bidding on our public space in confidence behind closed doors with the community shut out. It's no wonder that the approach that this council took to uh, the Crows um, was met with such fierce outrage and resistance in the community. Now, last week, um, Lord Mayor, we saw the council unanimously um, say to the Adelaide Crows that we didn't want um, them to be building a structure in the parklands, and I certainly welcome um, that outcome. But the threat for our public space remains, Lord Mayor, unless we adopt this position tonight, and that is take the parklands out from the unsolicited bids process and instead uh, adopt a process as has been outlined, which is in effect um, ensuring that any proposal relating to the parklands will simply come to APLA and Council for discussion in the public forum. That's the way it should be when we're talking about uh, public land, Lord Mayor. Last week was a good start, but tonight really is the opportunity for this council to send a strong message that it cares about public space and it cares about the public's right to know. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, Councillor Mackey, your hand was up. I'm not sure whether you were trying to second or to... Um... Apologies, Lord Mayor. Um, That's right. I, I wish to speak in support of the motion um, without labouring it. Um, uh, uh, unnecessarily, um, we can uh, we can make clear for the community and for the business community and for um, other organisations that um, parklands are not the subject of uh, unsolicited proposals. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I um, I wonder whether if um, the mover will, um, uh, or, or I guess you're yourself, Lord Mayor, sorry, no, yourself, whether if you would be able to break this into, into two parts when it comes to voting, because I, um, I'm i okay with, uh, with point, point two, but not- It is the mover's call, whether we do it or not. Oh, okay, parts. sure. Yeah, well then through, through you to the mover, whether if uh, they're okay to break it up into two components, because um, uh, n number two is, uh, is fine with me, but not number one. and. Uh, and I guess my argument there will be, as I've stated in the past, Lord Mayor, someone might come along with, a, with an innovative idea to do something good with the parklands. And I, I think I've said in the past, someone might come along and say, oh, I'll fertilise the parklands um, in, in this way. And um, why wouldn't we consider that? Someone might want to come along and survey the parklands or look at the trees or look at the parklands as a um, uh, you know, as, as, a, as an important asset that it is for us. So someone might want to come along uh, through our unsolicited uh, proposal guideline and, uh, and improve the part. Sorry, 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 Lord Mayor, sorry to cut you off, Councillor Abrahimsida, but I think uh, Councillor Abrahimsida was asking me a question whether or not I'd be willing to take the motion in parts. Would you like me to answer that and then that might guide your sure. comments? Sure. Uh, no, I'm not willing to take the motion in parts. Uh, to do yep. so would Thank rob you, the motion. Sims, Thank you. Okay, well then, uh, well, Lord Mayor, I won't be supporting this this motion. I think uh, we need to, uh, we, we can't be segregating the, the parklands because, as I said, I think our uh, um, unsolicited uh, bid uh, policy and and the way we deal with, uh, with those sorts of proposals coming to us, we can't be taking the parklands out of it because uh, if there is a way to, to improve our parklands for whatever uh, uh, whatever reason, I think we should um, um, uh, we, we should uh, uh, have the parklands as, as part of it. So um, uh, I'll, I'll cut the story short. I won't be supporting this, uh, and uh, I um, uh, remind members not to do that as well. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Um, Lord Mayor, I just would like to propose a variation um, that I think would strengthen. The intent of the motion it would be um, at that council at two resolves instead of notes. 
Because I note the administration comment didn't actually mention anything about being on the public public agenda. Um, uh, and I would change development to proposals because I think proposals encompasses Councillor Abraham today's fertilising as well as you know someone else's headquarters. So, you know, I'm going to go to yeah. so changing the word development to proposals. Mm. Um, and I'll go to the mover to see if he would be happy to... I might just seek some advice on administration around that. The reason why I put um, notes rather than language like resolves, um, Lord Mayor, was because I was advised by administration that that was current practice. So it's not the case that this council is directing a different process. It's simply noting that that is the, the process. process. I'll go um, to the acting CE for clarification in terms of the difference between resolves and notes. And I'm happy with what you suggested, but I just want to, yeah. Can I ask who you got your advice from, councillors? Oh, well, I don't want to um, oh, <laughs> drop the staff member in it, but I did see your advice <laughs> from, from Jenny before moving in motion. Thank you. Um, that's correct. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, yes, correct. It is current practice. Um, I guess the only query around resolving is where there is a time critical, I can't imagine, but a scenario where it would be like an urgent decision is needed and that timing just doesn't allow. So noting it happens 99.9% .9 of the time anyway, that's probably the only thing. Um, I'd also point out, sorry, just with the variation, the word proposals is used twice, so it's it's a bit personal. And not oh, in relation, relation to, to the, the parklands, park it should actually say any proposals of which councillor notified in relation to the parklands. Look, I'm happy to accept the variation. I don't have a problem with that. And so, so thank you. I've got the mover and the seconder. I'll go back to you, councillor Hyde. Uh, sorry, Councillor Moran, I need your microphone on. I can't even oh, hear you and I'm right here. So we're changing proposals in the first bit to development? No, no we, we're incorporating all pro any proposals, not just development. So it's in addition to any development. Councillor Hyde, did you want to continue um, speaking? Yeah, just, just briefly, and I know when you suggest variations, you can't justify it, but um, so I'll justify it now. I just I just felt that because when reading the administration comment, there's, uh, if this motion is carried, any proposals relating to development would be included on Apple's agenda for consideration. Well, of course, but it doesn't say that they'll be included in the public published agenda for consideration, and that's the real clincher, and that's what you want. Um, and so I think including that would be important. But at the same time, I, I also do think it's uh, important to not to rule out, you know, Armand's fertilizer or my automated swarm mowers, you know, or anything like that. So if someone does have a proposal, um, what I think this does is, is it actually, uh, yes, it removes it from the existing policy framework, but it also gives certainty, which is what the unsolicited big guidelines did anyway, was it gave certainty to us and a third party around how we deal with something. This, I think, gives certainty to them around that question of, at what point will your intellectual property be your property be available for the public to look at and to and, and to look at it and to understand? So this makes it very clear to them that if they approach us about something and they have a proposal, whether it's a new club room or God forbid a headquarters or whatever else, um, or a better way of delivering services in the parklands, they will then uh, that can then that is then considered by Apple. Sorry. Okay, uh, sorry, I'm just, so so I've just asked a question, C, because in my reading of this, parts one and two cancel each other out. So if we're excluding the parklands, then nothing's going to go to APLA, so therefore we don't need two. So, it, so, it, yeah. Oh, any proposals. Okay, so we're not talking about unsolicited no. proposals. Correct, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, thank so you. So you're excluding it from that existing policy, and you're just beefing up what your exist, what your what your what your process is now, yep, which is that's fine. anything that happens on parklands ends up going to. Well, it does go to Apple anyway. Going to Apple, and of course, it does go to Apple. Um, uh, but even though Apple was never included in the unsolicited proposals guidelines, so there was a bit of a discrepancy there, and that's something we've acknowledged later. Um, uh, but as well, I think this I think this makes it very clear if someone wants to think about doing something on the parklands with us, at what point it becomes public, which is which is uh, almost immediately, it's quite early in the piece, 
Um, and when you're dealing with public land, I think that's a very fair thing um, uh, to ask for. I think it, it gives certainty to them around the, the point in time where they have to have maximum protection for their intellectual property. Um, uh, and so we can be clear and upfront with them and allow them the time to get that protection before they come to us or before they initiate officially the proposal um, so that they're not caught short and we haven't done them a disservice for wanting to improve, uh, for wanting to give us improvements to service delivery in the parklands. Um, uh, so I thank Councillor Sims for bringing this and I hope this is the final motion that wraps up um, a very long saga that I think started in one of our second meetings, I think almost. Thank you. Now, Councillor Moran, if you still, yep. Um, look, I think this uh, does improve the motion because it pulls into uh, the, the, the published agendas. I think resolves is stronger than notes. Um, it doesn't stop anybody putting a proposal to council. Um, I can't imagine why anybody would propose to fertilise our parklands for us or um, map our trees. We already have mapped our trees, we already have mapped our parklands and we already do fertilise our parklands. I so think it were just examples, Councillor Moran, as opposed to saying that we don't do yeah. them. I mean, what we're talking about is buildings in the parklands, alienating parklands and so forth. And I think every one of us struggled coming from different directions uh, about the pro's proposal. Um, some of us wanted us to overturn the unsolicited um, bids process halfway through because we realised we were hitting a brick wall all the time. And I don't think there was anybody, I can't remember anybody saying this is a fantastic um, thing, that, you know, the unsolicited proposal is fantastic. A, the, the Crows one wasn't unsolicited, it was completely solicited. Um, but I think there's just, dots the eyes across the T to end the sorry saga and I um, uh, applaud um, Councillor Sims and Councillor Hyde. Thank you. Councillor Martin. I wonder if we could form a circle and all sing Kumbaya. I mean, this is uh, the... <laughs> uh, this is uh, the final piece in uh, the process that begun, uh, began with Councillor Hyde's uh, motion to the special meeting of Council last week. Um, and I commend him also for um, uh, the amendment. It does improve the motion, it makes it stronger, um, and it does certainly say um, to the world that uh, the parklands are excluded from the unsolicited bids process. Um, for the benefit of councillors who aren't certain, our own publicity says that an unsolicited proposal may include a proposal, and then it lists them, the purchase issue, uh, sorry, the purchase lease or development of council owned or managed land, delivery of goods and services, provision of infrastructure, innovation or entrepreneurship with benefits. Now, uh, that's a summary of that. Um, this takes that out of uh, that realm and it allows still um, for as much manure as Councillor Abrahams and I would uh, like to put on the parklands or indeed for innovative uh, mowing machines. All of those things are still possible, but we have by this excluded the parklands from those unsolicited proposals, which uh, in the case of the, uh, the Crows proposal, which was um, to uh, take over the parklands, was conducted in secret uh, because it was an unsolicited bid that required confidentiality. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, I just conclude by saying that uh, I went back today to the uh, the principles of, uh, of the uh, Parklands legislation, the statutory principles, and uh, at last I feel that those principles are being met. Um, we are uh, holding those lands now for the public benefit of uh, South Australia, and we're making them available for the use and enjoyment of, uh, of South Australians, not restricting their uses. Um, I think this is a huge step forward. Congratulations to all those associated with it, um, and I do ask everyone to endorse it. Councillor Abraham, today you've spoken, so this is a question. Yes, just a question. I just need some clarity on this. Um, so, are we saying that we're excluding the parklands altogether from the unsolicited uh, uh, proposal guidelines? But if anything related to the parklands come through, we're referring it to APLA before we consider it. Correct. Okay. 
Um, I will also, members, just remind you that we our uh, unsolicited proposals guideline is currently suspended and has been since April. So therefore, this has no direct effect because it's on the suspended policy and therefore it would have to come into us as per point three um, with a uh, for us to have a look at through procurement policy. So just just to understand that we it can't directly uh, affect the unsolicited uh, bids proposal because that's suspended by council at the moment. Is that correct, Acting C? Uh, through the facility no, member. It's, with it's the... fine. Sorry. Through the presiding member, the current policy is suspended as, um, from a resolution of council. So if you wish to reactivate that, I would assume you would bring in a motion to bring that back. I have Councillor Martin, I'm assuming it's a question, and Councillor Kira. Yes, Lord Mayor, I'm just um, confused by your clarification. The unsolicited bids system for the parklands was suspended by council, is that what Correct. you're saying? Correct. And is it then the case that what this does is completely eradicate the possibility of it being, uh, being uh, reactivated because it now excludes the parklands? That's the no, it doesn't. It's just that we have to look at this through a different method. If I can go to the act. Through the presiding member, apologies, I don't have my notes from the workshop that we had um, recently uh, with council. My understanding was back last year when you suspended it, you asked for some things to be considered um, and that was brought back to you as a workshop recently. Um, so that was, and the since that time, there's still a resolution on the books um, saying that your policy is currently suspended. formally suspended until you resolved various elements associated with why you suspended it in the first place. Um, sorry, Lord Mayor, then this does not, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, supplant uh, the other motion then. I, I thought I was going to vote for something that actually now supplants that and this is the successor. Um, so my understanding is it doesn't supplant that, but when, if the unsolicited proposal guidelines come back, it will exclude the parklands. Ah, okay, thank you. So you're yeah. still achieving, okay. sorry, Councillor Sims, you're yeah. still achieving that, but sorry, in the that. interim, yes. we will do it through procurement policy because yeah. that's the only you've avenue that, that we've got. Yeah, thanks, Lord Mayor. Sorry, it wasn't clear. I had the same misconception as Councillor Martin. Thank you. Apology. Uh, Councillor Kira, did you still have a question or wish to speak? Yes, Lord Mayor. Um, through you, to the administration, can the administration see, uh, conceive of any situation uh, whereby this amendment, this motion, if passed, might act cruel uh, or otherwise dissuade uh, the public from proposing uh, uh, non-commercial development in the parkland, such as a new garden uh, or uh, development such as the uh, tree climbing? Uh, Thank you, Councillor Kira. See. Through the presiding member, um, anything um, in relation to community gardens is usually brought through to um, APLA for consideration. Um, those types of activities would normally be brought into APLA. Whether that would dissuade someone um, is obviously uh, not something I can really comment on tonight. Uh, so just, sorry, step part two was the commercial oh. operation, Councillor Count. Count. So through the presiding member, um, the tree climb um, as a commercial operator currently on the parklands, and there are other commercial operators on the parklands. Um, Tom, did you wish to comment? Through you, presiding member, uh, thank you, CEO. The, the an, an initial response or the contact from City Tree Climb was through an unsolicited bid, but it was not deemed to have enough of uh, in nature in regards to being unique. We then subsequently went out to an expression of interest with City Tree Climb and Council considered that on merit. So, just to follow up, does that mean that without the unsolicited bid guidelines applying to the parklands? Uh, we wouldn't have had the proposal which then engendered uh, the 
uh, the, the, the request for, for a tender, if you will. Acting CE. Through the presiding member, I don't think we had the policy in place um, at that time. So the tree climb proceeded. Um, our unsolicited bids policy. So there's no view on whether we're stuffing things up basically uh, with, this, with this motion, to put it frankly. I think that was a statement of the question. Um, members, I'm going to go back to Councillor C. Uh, sorry, Councillor Knoll. Just, just one quick comment, and that is I mean, I appreciate it, yes, uh, certainly uh, uh, to try and protect the parklands, etc. But I still note that we spend all this energy and effort to something that's going to come back to the chamber for decision at the end anyway. We talk about the, the process before with the crows and still it put unsolicited and the amount of effort that people put in it uh, to vilify it and all, the, uh, and, and all the rest without having the facts available, without having a needs analysis and all, etc. So, uh, you know, all that was, was a mess. The point here, though, is we're putting all this effort in to do these proposals and certainly I'll support it. But the thing is, it comes back to this chamber at the very end and we decide on behalf of the community. The outcome is the same. It's just that we spend so much time doing these minor things that truly don't enhance the actual overall uh, you know, outcomes. It's just that we do this in the end anyway and it comes to us and we do this in front of the public. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And look, I understand it may not be as um, impactful as some of Councillor Knoll's initiatives on producing booklets and the it's like. Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims. But it is. That was Lord very Mayor. rude. I will well, ask you to. It is, Lord Mayor, an, an important um, initiative and one that many people in the community um, have been concerned about. And there's been a long campaign around this. There's been lots and lots of concern in the community. Um, and I think rightly so, because people have been concerned about the culture of having these discussions behind closed doors. Now, I know, Lord Mayor, that the unsolicited bids process is currently suspended as a result of my motion of last year. But now, finally, when or if it, when it comes back to Council, the parklands will be excluded. And that is a breakthrough, Lord Mayor, um, and a reflection of the good work of the community and those um, activists and members of the community who've been campaigning long and hard on uh, the public's right to know. So I want to thank all those councillors who are supportive of this. I thank Councillor Hyde for his input. And I think this really builds on um, the work of uh, last week where we passed a unanimous resolution telling the Crows we weren't going to um, support plans for commercial operation on the parklands. And now we're saying to residents and ratepayers of the city of Adelaide that the era of closed doors meeting, meetings um, about our public space, that's come to an end. And instead, if you have a proposal for the parklands, you need to bring it to this council and you need to bring it into uh, the public realm so that it can be discussed openly. I think that's a real breakthrough, Lord Mayor, and I thank um, uh, councillors for their support. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, can I have that recorded as unanimous? Thank you. Uh, members, we go to 17.9, Councillor Martin, uh, motion or no spots? Yes, Councillor Martin, uh, credit card investigation. Um, yes, uh, Lord Mayor, look, I, I note the uh, administration's expression of concern about investigating uh, credit card breaches, um, and I would be prepared to withdraw this if I can have an assurance that the KPMG report of 2018-19 is provided to those elected members who would like to view it. Um, acting CEO. Uh, through the presiding member, um, that would have been reported through to um, audit committee. Um, so I'm sure there's no reason why that can't be distributed to council. Okay, with that assurance, Lord Mayor, I withdraw the motion. Thank you, councillor. Um, that takes us to 17.10, Councillor Martin, elected members oversight of businesses. Yeah. Um, um, may I have a second of, or are you going no, Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Thank you. Um, look, Lord Mayor, um, a, a question before I start. Um, can I ask the administration why the information hasn't been presented to uh, Council for QF1 and QF2. Absolutely. Acting CEO. Uh, thank you uh, through the, the chair. 
Um, there was repeated feedback at each QF around dissatisfaction that we were reporting our commercial businesses in confidence. Um, there was an undertaking given to rework our commercial business um, financial reporting um, in, an, uh, in an attempt to be able to present as much on the public agenda um, and to rework the report so that we could bring that back in um, and integrated in with a public QF3 report. Um, we haven't been as timely as we, we, we would like to have that work completed. Um, Tom McCready is working through um, various ways still. We hope to have that ready for QF3. So it's purely because we were trying to um, make sure that we were able to have as much of that financial information reported um, on the public record. Okay, look, uh, Lord Mayor, with, with that assurance um, and with, I, I suspect, uh, the endorsement of the elected members, um, I'll speak no further. Thank you. So I'll go to Councillor Hyde as the seconder. Oh, um, just a quick question. Is it so the commercial and confidence stuff, this is not saying come in publicly, this is saying because the reports are excellent at the moment and we're now going to receive in confidence as I think we previously did broadly, um, the actual nuts and bolts of the commercial operations. Activity. To enable us to report on the public record, um, it will be slightly different. It's more KPI reporting. Um, obviously, if that's not satisfactory um, to council members, then we will revert back to confidential finan full financial reporting, similar to what we've done in the past. We're endeavouring to try and have um, as much information based on feedback from this chamber over the past uh, couple of years that they would prefer to have our um, commercial um, financial reporting that we've been doing for many years in confidence to try and bring that through the QF3 report that's normally on the public record. So sorry. But if there is, sorry through the presiding member, if there is financial commercial um, detailed information then of course that will be in confidence. We're just trying to rework it so we can bring as much into the public report so, as possible. So, so if I could just clarify, Lord Mayor, the, the new way of reporting which does include more commercial information KPIs, that, that's not actually going to change, we're not changing back. We're just going to be presenting more information, but just in confidence. More information in public, and then the commercial in confidence will still be in confidence. Well, yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. That's just what I want. Thank you. Sorry for answering on your behalf, was that correct? That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Members, if not, I'll go get Councillor Martin to sum up. Uh, no, no, just again, Lord Mayor, thank you. Um, and thank you to the administration for that clarification. Uh, I urge members to uh, support the request. Members, those in favour? Those against? Uh, Councillor Abraham today, I'm sorry, you walked in. Were you voting on that last sure, motion? Yeah. <laughs> Can I have that recorded as unanimous? Thank you. Um, members, that takes us to num uh, item number 17.11, which is Smart Parking, Melbourne Street. Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, look, um, I. Um, you want me to get a seconder? Or? I do. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Okay. Just for. Um, uh, for clarity, when, when we rise, do you seek the seconder or do I ask for the seconder? Um, well, you move the motion and seek a seconder. That's generally okay. how it used got to it. go. Yeah, no, got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, look, um, I, I spoke with uh, many traders on uh, Melbourne Street over the weekend and this morning after um, communicating with them. And it's fair to say that uh, they are uh, fairly apprehensive about the introduction of smart parking on Melbourne Street. Um, now I've shown some of them the, uh, the city's smart parking app and I've said to them that the council staff have previously said um, smart parking apps, smart parking does not necessarily mean paid parking. Um, it's just that the app would identify spaces available. Um, and the response I received from uh, many traders, uh, some of them would be known to people in this room, the response I received was, well, why would council put those sensors in the ground 
uh, at considerable cost when it's under some financial pressure and then not include paid parking. And I guess that's a fair point. Why would we do that? Um, uh, that's their fear anyway. Um, now, for those who don't know the history, paid parking in North Adelaide has been a contentious matter for many, many years. Um, it's always stopped at the start of O'Connell Street and stopped at the start of Melbourne Street because the locals have gone to the barricades uh, time and time again over paid parking. Uh, and their view is that North Adelaide is primarily a residential suburb serviced by um, two main streets and they are not part of the CBD, they say. Um, North Adelaide is in no need, they say, of paid parking or indeed um, the smart parking app. Um, I had uh, one trader email you this morning and I, I will quote, um, uh, she said, we recently opened our business on Melbourne Street and we found Melbourne Street to be extremely quiet with free parking. Uh, they want to know, and in fact, they ask the question, what can we as a council do for them um, to bring people to Melbourne Street rather than uh, create the perception that they might be frightened away by the possibility of paid parking? And uh, Lord Mayor, you'll be pleased to, to hear that I told them about the initiatives uh, that you proposed, the, the deep clean, the, uh, the lights and all of that. Um, but it is a matter of uh, some fear for them that this might turn into paid parking. And so what I support from the elected body today is simply an affirmation of our long-standing policy. And it has been a very long-standing policy um, that we will continue with timed parking, but no apps, no possibility of paid parking at this time. Um, we just want to make sure that businesses in Melbourne Street are supported, um, not um, concerned by this kind of development. Thank you, Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? I reserve my right. Members, Councillor Kerr. Um, speak against this, Lord Mayor. Uh, it, we should not. Uh, be enacting uh, arbitrary uh, distortions on our policy, on our economic policy in relation to businesses in the city. Uh, this will mean that we ought to equally ask that other main streets, commercial main streets, where there is presently paid parking, ought to be free as well. Otherwise, constituents on those streets will quite rightly say, why are we subsidising a street in North Adelaide? Um, I don't think this, this is a sensible policy and I urge councillors to leave it to the administration to put to us the case uh, as and where it is deemed appropriate for paid parking uh, according to a sensible overall balanced and not distorting uh, policy. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I respectfully take a different view uh, to that of Councillor Kerr. Um, we're talking about a part of the city uh, where retail has been struggling for decades and where currently we do not have um, uh, metered parking. And what this motion seeks to do is prevent, if I'm understanding correctly, uh, um, Councillor Martin, uh, is, is to make a decision to not bring on um, that um, a fee for parking uh, at this time. Is that a, that's a question? Um, I'm happy to support the motion. Councillor Hyde. Um, I'm happy with one and three, but not two. Could we, we, could we take it in parts? Uh, I'll ask the mover if he's happy to take it in parts. Phil, sorry, Councillor uh, Martin. Um, sorry, I'm just reading again. Just give me two seconds, Lord Mayor. I'm not opposed, I'm just trying to understand. Just the census. Yeah. Check in some census and say you won't charge people. Yeah. Um, okay, we're not going to charge. <coughs> and that's our council policy, I'll accept that. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Uh, yes, look, um, I'm happy, happy to uh, encourage the move to take it in parts. Um, uh, I think the main thing that Councillor Martin, the Councillor for North Adelaide, is trying to reinforce 
is a long hill, that there's no paid parking on the north side of the river. Now, to, to answer Councillor Carer's rather hard to understand, if you wanted to move as the council to that area, that you wanted to remove all paid parking from Hutt Street, which is really the only other street that's similar to Melbourne O'Connell Street, I would 100% support you. But you don't do that. You just criticise us for doing Councilor. it in the area that we're near. Councillor. Uh, if you'd like to. I'm sick of being interrupted. Oh, Excuse that. me, Councillor Moran. And not you. I said, I'm sick of him interrupting. Thank you. Uh, if we can you speak to him, I thought you said me. I was going to say, that's a bit rude. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit over shitty there. But uh, no, I'm saying to the Ward Council there that if it's a good idea to keep, it is a good idea to keep um, Melbourne Street and um, O'Connell Street, they're struggling. People, the parking there is actually quite good because it's not paid parking. You can always get a park there in the daytime um, to add any more stress to those streets. But what I'm saying, Lord Mayor, is that if the ward council for that area would like to move a motion, um, a positive motion, thank you, but we're talking to this then one. I would totally support that. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Um, okay, Lord Mayor. Um, look, having agreed to take this in parts, um, I probably won't uh, vote against, um, well, in fact, I'll vote for all of those uh, measures um, because I, I am uh, presenting what is a concern of uh, businesses there, many of whom rely on that uh, timed parking, which is anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours, um, and often for um, important services such as medical services. And in fact, uh, one of the doctors to whom I spoke this morning was concerned that sometimes his consultations run longer than they should, and that uh, introducing uh, these smart parking apps might actually facilitate quicker fines for his patients. Um, now, I have no idea about that. I'm agnostic on that, but um, there is certainly a concern to leave the street as it is, and not least because it is not overtaxed. As I said earlier on, um, uh, one of the new businesses uh, e emailed me this morning and say it's extremely quiet on Melbourne Street, and it is. There is no difficulty at this time in parking on Melbourne Street um, right up uh, the front of um, um, uh, John Swan's Melbourne Street Cellars, which is right in the middle of uh, Melbourne Street. Not that I visit there regularly, Lord Mayor, but it, it is possible to park um, uh, fairly easily in North Adelaide. Um, look, I, I simply ask people to support this. It, it's not an unreasonable thing to propose on behalf of the small businesses of Melbourne Street. Members, I'm going to take it in parts. Um, so, members, we're voting on part one. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members voting on part two. Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. And we're voting on part three. Those. Council members, the division has been called on part two of the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until the names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims, Councillor Mackey and Councillor Martin. Uh, members, part three of the motion, those in favour? Those against? Division. That is passed, carried. Council members, division has been called on part three of the motion. All those in favour, please stand, remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims, Councillor Ho, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Martin, Councillor Pinole, and Councillor Abraham today. Um, members, it being eight o'clock, I think we shall take a short break with leave of the chamber, uh, 20 minutes. Yeah. Members? Is this a soup break? Or... Um, by show of hands, leave the chamber. We'll break for 20 minutes. Thank you very much.
Um, so let's get cracking. Um, 17.12, which is the Deputy Lord Mayor's motion. Um, she has asked for Councillor Hyde to move as a motion without notice under 18. So we'll uh, go to that later. Councillor Mackey, we have uh, 17.13, which uh, motion on notice. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, colleagues, uh, I move the council, noting the public controversy about the toxic culture, quote unquote, in federal and state parliament, asks the administration to provide a report to the next council meeting on whether there may have been any allegations of sexual assault, sexual harassment, assault and or discriminatory behaviour lodged by or against council employees, volunteers and contractors since March 2011, and if so, how many? 1.2, how many allegations were investigated either by internal or external investigators and what action did the administration subsequently take in each case? 1.3, a copy of the organisation's policies and information on training programs con conducted to deal with such issues. And Lord Mayor, in moving this uh, and noting the administration's comment, I'm happy to um, amend the time frame uh, um, or to, to accept the administration's request that uh, this uh, be a matter uh, brought to the April uh, regular meeting of council. If I have a seconder. I'll look for a second, sorry. Councillor Sims. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, I think it's self-explanatory. There has been a major shift in community standards and community sentiment, and we have a duty of care as effectively the directors of the board of corporation of the city of Adelaide, I recognise that, of course, we delegate employment authority uh, matters to the chief executive. However, that doesn't abrogate our duty of care uh, to our employees. Uh, and I think uh, there are there are many, many, many workplaces that are currently uh, recognising this shift in sentiment um, and. Uh, an attempt uh, are attempting to um, address the changes um, in community standards and I believe as the Capital City Council it is beholden upon us uh, to model this same kind of um, standard um, uh, within our own organisation. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak? Members, Councillor Hyde. Could I just suggest a variation and that's the inclusion of elected members? Um, perhaps after the word against at 1-1. One, one. So that would read lodged by or against elected members. members comma, council employees, volunteers or contractors. Um, again, through you, Lord Mayor, I'm, I'm happy to accept that uh, variation, but just by way of explanation, um, hopefully to uh, assuage your concerns, Councillor Hyde, uh, or any concerns you may have, um, my, my expectation is that the conduct of the elected body already is subject to considerable public scrutiny and thus my concern was for our duty of care to employees but i'm happy to accommodate your your um, suggestion members if not i'll go back to councillor Mackey to sum up councillor Mackey. No. oh sorry councillor martin yeah. look I, I just wanted to uh, to commend councillor Mackey for uh, raising this um, uh, because um, following the allegations that were made uh, in the federal parliament, I think a lot of people were asking, um, is this culture in other organisations? And I think it's a reasonable thing, as Councillor Mackey has done, to ask, um, to ask the question, is this something that affects us? Um, and I, I was a bit surprised, I must say, Lord Mayor, and I, I'm not saying this in a, a negative form, uh, um, any fashion that would be uh, reflective of uh, uh, an inappropriate response from our administration. But I am surprised that we don't have statistics about whether there have been sexual assaults, sexual harassment or discrimination complaints in the organisation and that we have to wait a month for that. Um, I, I would have thought that's the sort of thing that you have at your fingertips and uh, you know I'm not making that as a criticism I'm just saying we should have that information so that it can be uh, presented to council 
Um, but look, I'm, I'm prepared to wait, um, as indeed um, uh, others are waiting on reports to their parliaments. Um, and it may be that we have to examine our, our practices, uh, our past practices. And if that is the case, then I would urge the council to do that and to do that rapidly. Um, uh, because this is such an important matter um, to not only uh, our stakeholders, including at the top of the list our staff, but for the community as well, um, that they have this reassurance. Is this a point of clarification, Just point Councillor of clarification, Mayor. Um, My apologies, I did miss uh, read in haste the administration's advice, and, and I can clearly now see that um, the, the point that is being made by our administration is that the April meeting allowing for it, it to come It won't to go to committee, it will go straight to council. So, um, uh, uh, through you, Lord Mayor, I take um, the advice of uh, Acting Chief Executive. Would the May meeting provide sufficient time or June? I'm, I'm, I'm not time time tied. Acting Chief I may be tongue tied, but I'm not yeah, time tied. Thank you. And if I can possibly ask you if you'd like to respond to. Um, Councillor Martin's accusations as well. Uh, thank you. Through the presiding member, there were a couple of comments. Sorry, Councillor Martin, if I could just clarify. The reason why it will take time is that some of it's paper copy, some of it's on database. Um, Councillor Mack is requesting 10 years of data, which um, has been held in various different formats. We do have mandatory reporting through our WHS, which is reported each year in our annual report. So that's another mechanism for you to make sure um, that we um, you know, have the right, um, the right safety systems in place to ensure that our employees have a safe working environment. It's because it's 10 years worth of data that we're being asked to source that will take longer than perhaps um, you know, other organisations who may have um, been able to retrofit their paper based data into systems that might be able to get it at the flick of a switch, as you suggested. Councillor Abraham today. Just a couple of quick questions. Uh, picking up on what the acting CEO was uh, just um, talking about. So um, we do have um, um, uh, policies that uh, I guess encourage um, employees to, to speak up or to seek assistance. Acting CEO. Through the presiding member, um, yes, we've got a raft of different policies and obviously that has evolved over 10 years. So for us to be able to step you through that will take a little bit of time as well. And just another quick question, if I can, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, is there a, an employee assistance program or EAP? I can't remember what it stands for, but we do have that available to our employees as well. Acting C. Through the presiding member, yes, EAP, our employee assistance program is also um, in place and has been for many years. And also, councillor, it's available to all council members and their families as well. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, maybe in summing up, um, Councillor Mackican, um, if, if he's got any sort of information about um, whether if there was something that sort of instigated this other than the um, current federal and, and state parliament uh, issues that, that we're seeing, uh, then I'd be interested in, in hearing that. But I'm just mindful that um, uh, I, I see Councillor Mackie's intention and, and, and I am supportive, but um, I'm just mindful that we'll be digging something or, or doing something somewhere where um, there is really no need. So, um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, uh, listen to Councillor Mackey's uh, uh, sum up and hopefully some more information will come out there. Sorry, Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Oh, yes, <clears throat> I support the inclusion of the elected members too and uh, to Councillor Abrazin, uh, we would be the only organisation that didn't have any problems in this area ever. Um, so I don't think that uh, Councillor Martin's um, comment should be taken any other way than we should be doing what all the other administrations are doing, is looking into their culture of sexual harassment, especially at this time. Um, there have been problems on council over the years. Um, and in my opinion, they've been dealt with um, speedily and effectively, but um, the administration would probably know better than I would. But it is certainly not a problem that we are an orphan to. Um, in fact, past CEOs have told me that they spent a lot of their time dealing with these matters. And um, 
So I think it's time that we really shone the, um, what is it, the disinfectant of, of uh, light or public, uh, uh, public notice onto this. Uh, I'm unaware in my 25 years of any councillors being involved. Actually, that, that's not true. Um, but with the large number of employees, the large number of female employees, I think it's very important that we really catch up with the times and make sure that um, our employees are safe. It's easy to report. And um, as I said, we keep up with the current culture. I thought personally, having been on council for a long time, that these days that we'd solved all these problems. But clearly the um, things that have come from the federal and the state made in the federal parliament have shown that really in my lifetime, nothing much has changed. The same problems of power differentiation um, and harassment um, still exist. And it's time that, that we said, just stop it. And to suggest as Councillor Abbott said that, that we might be digging into something that doesn't exist is, is just pure fantasy. Members, I don't believe that this was brought to the Chamber, though I'll ask for Councillor Mackey to clarify that because there is any perceived uh, allegations that we're dealing with simply that we're actually going to have a look and also that um, certainly my experience, Councillor Moran, has been that anything along these lines is dealt with and all the policies are in place, all the support systems are in place and including things around domestic violence um, for our own employees. Um, it's simply that uh, the time is taken, as the acting CEO said, to actually go back through a different framework in terms of 10 years of data. Uh, as opposed to the last year or two years or three years. It's quite different in terms of the systems that have been used. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm assuming that you've just also put March 2011 as a 10-year capture, capture. As a 10-year capture. Okay. Uh, members, if not, I'll go to Councillor Mackey to sum up. Councillor Mackey? Second. Oh, did you? You, no, you no, reserved no, your right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, look, thanks a lot, Mayor. And um, I'm perfectly happy to reassure Councillor Abraham today that there, there is no specific incident or instance uh, that I am aware of that I'm seeking to covertly uh, uh, pursue um, through this. Um, we're a major employer and we want to be an employer of choice. Um, and I think that is something that as the governors of this, uh, this organisation, we should continue to uphold and aspire to be. Um, I, uh, I also would just uh, make the observation that this uh, request for a report is not about naming names. It's vitally important that our employees have confidence uh, in the confidentiality of their, of their access to EAP or their seeking of redress. Um, it is really to get a longitudinal sense over the last decade. Has there been uh, an increase? Has there been a decrease? Uh, has the frequency of reporting changed as indeed community standards have been changing? Uh, and I would also uh, emphasise this is not only uh, about harassment uh, of female employees. Um, there are people in positions of power and people in positions of love who don't have power. And they can be men or women uh, who may feel harassed. And it's not only about sexual harassment. Uh, so uh, colleagues, I, I commend the motion to you and I hope that I can look to your support. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, can that be recorded as unanimous? Um, item 17.14, Councillor Abraham today, be scooted trial. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I move the motion as printed and seek a seconder. Yep, thank you, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, as, as you would know, the City of Unley uh, recently looked at e-scooters. They've, they've endorsed uh, the trial of uh, these e-scooters, and um, uh, I think these e-scooters uh, for us have been a have been a success in moving people around the City of Adelaide. But also, one of the things that uh, I've always been keen on uh, exploring is moving the people, well, I guess, from from a trainer's perspective, moving the people into the city where they can come in and uh, uh, um, stimulate the city of Adelaide's economy. So um, um, in, in, in saying that, I, uh, I endorse this, uh, this motion to, to the chamber uh, and look uh, forward to um, uh, some constructive discussions.
Thank you. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Members? If not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Summer. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? If I can have that recorded as unanimous as well. Thank you. Uh, 17.15 uh, has been withdrawn, Councillor Hyde. <coughs> Just confirming 17.15 has been withdrawn. Sorry, Thank you. Um, pardon? Uh, is it coming back all the way? No, it's been withdrawn. Okay. Um, that takes us to 17.16, Councillor Hyde, water infrastructure. Thanks, Lord Mayor. This, um, I look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abrahams. Um, this motion is really just about addressing a number of concerns that have been raised. Um, it's unfortunate. Councillor Moran isn't here because her, um, her photo that she sent through of those hideous pineapple plant things dying in Victoria Square um, for want of water um, uh, was just the latest in a long line of um, concerns that have been relayed to me by uh, residents who have issues with irrigated areas, um, uh, well, areas that should be irrigated that perhaps are not receiving enough water. So um, this is in response to those concerns. I would really, really like to know, um, particularly as our climate warms and dries, um, I want to know how our irrigation infrastructure is holding up, whether it's coping with demands. And, you know, I know, I know that our excellent teams have informed me time and time again that we have um, pressure issues occasionally um, throughout the, the irrigation network, and that leads to inadequate watering. Um, perhaps they're caused by SA water, perhaps they're caused by something else. I'm not really sure, but I think this uh, gives the administration impetus to go and have a a good look at that um, and to come back to us with um, information around uh, what is required, whether more is required, um, where the actual issues lie. Um, and because it is, if it is, if it is SA water's problem, then we do pay for water. It's something we should certainly escalate um, uh, so that we can ensure we're servicing our green spaces uh, adequately. Um, I note as well that uh, on Hutt Street, we have issues with the roses, and I understand that a large part of that is because the plane trees suck up all the water, but it's also been confirmed that some of the irrigation within the median strip on the southern portion of the street um, uh, is also uh, not up to scratch and not to the ring enough water, and that's why the roses there are particularly uh, suffering. So, And, and even, even when roses are drought resistant and hardy, uh, hardy plant. So uh, I, I'd really like to see an answer to, to some of these questions that I have posed. And I think those ratepayers who have raised these concerns would like to see answers as well. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Abrahamsday. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll, I'll certainly be supporting um, Councillor Hyde's motion. Uh, but a question, if I might, um, to through you, Lord Mayor, to the administration. Um, Am I correct that there was a period where we had a dedicated uh, member of the administration team uh, who, uh, whose job was in very large part to move quickly on issues of infrastructure? Um, I, I, in this case, we're talking water, but um, where we're reliant upon the um, support of utility providers to respond quickly or in a timely manner to, to addressing um, uh, issues that, that the public uh, not unreasonably thinks that is our our problem, but of course, of course, it is other um, Acting providers. Acting I can ask you to uh, through the presiding member. I'm not quite clear. I think, Councillor, um, are you is the, are you referencing um, an admin comment on the agenda that talks to reinstatements? My apologies. My apologies. Yes, yes, indeed, yeah. I, I am. I thought uh, so. Thanks. Sorry. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, can I once again have that recorded as unanimous? Um, Councillor Knoll, we have cycling network facilities. Motion. Councillor Hyde, seconded, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's short and sweet on this. Uh, what I'm trying to achieve here is, is a starting point for working uh, towards uh, improving our cycling infrastructure through simple means. 
and this is only that when I look through all of the various maps, etc., around, uh, there is the, they're so varied and so inaccurate. And what we're trying to do as a city is to start to um, uh, enable our cyclists to well, feel comfortable, uh, um, you know, and making our city more visible for them to go around, uh, and, you know, and enjoy you know the cycling experience. So this is uh, making uh, known all of the facilities we have in the city uh, for you know end of trip because there's so many that we don't know about, besides the ones that the council has in its own, um, that, that are available to, to the public to use. Um, it is important that uh, uh, we have a much clearer uh, view of the various streets and uh, one of our, our- Sorry, I'm just going to interrupt. Councillor Martin, are you all right? Yep. Okay. I can help. <laughs> Never had <it> before. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, but um, but also uh, having information on, on a map that will help them to understand which is the best route to come into town, what is the safest, uh, and it can be even uh, as, as one of our, our um, electors uh, uh, suggested that uh, you know about the speed limits in the various streets if they were able to you know they are varied. So between that and the infrastructure for for bike repairs and bubblers and all those sorts of things because that means that someone can go around uh, our city uh, and through the parklands and know where things are. They can then take children and, uh, with them and all the rest so that they're able to do this um, and they can do it planned. And I think if we if we do that in the, in, in, uh, and uh, you know, noting that there hasn't been a, a cohesive plan yet uh, in regards to the, in the cycling infrastructure and I think all those sort of things are, are needing to come in as well. So this is just the very beginning so that we can start to make evident to people uh, what we have on offer. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Did you wish to speak? No. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, this is a, um, a really, you know, a nice idea and I'm um, very happy to um, support it. I guess my concern, Lord Mayor, is that it's going to be a fairly uh, thin booklet because we don't have the cycling infrastructure um, to fill it. We haven't yet completed the east-west bikeway. Um, um, Lord Mayor, point of, order, the... point of order, relevance to um, the motion, What Lord is Mayor. the point of order? Ah, it's relevance to the motion. I don't believe uh, it's present. That's not a point of order, so. So when you call a point of order, you have to tell me what he's breaching. In breaching the relevant provision towards relevance. <laughs> okay. So perhaps we can actually talk about talk to the motion as opposed to breaching point of order. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, the point I was making is relating to uh, one of the dot points listed under point two, cycling routes. And as I was saying, we, we yet to finish um, the east-west bikeway and we do need um, more cycling infrastructure in our city. I would be delighted if we had um, significant cycling infrastructure so that we could fill a booklet um, such as the kind that um, Councillor Canole is proposing. But I think this is a nice initiative um, and uh, it's one that um, I'm happy to support. And I look forward to us being able to fill the pages, um, Lord Mayor, when we actually start rolling out the cycling infrastructure that our city so desperately needs. We need to build an east-west bikeway, Lord Mayor. And uh, I hope that this is a sign of the action that is yet to come. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Oh, sorry. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Knoll. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Sorry. Lord Mayor. Just to um, emphasise the point made by uh, Councillor Sims. Thank you, France. Great, um, great motion, great ideas. But of course, this should come at the end of actually having the cycling routes in place. We wouldn't put car parks in place without roads to get there. Likewise, it is um, not pointless, but not. Uh, not particularly of high value to have all of the facilities noted relating to cycling if we don't have safe cycling routes in place in the first place. So certainly I support uh, Councillor Knoll's um, intentions and efforts, but of course the uh, primary objective is to first of all provide safety to people who choose to ride bikes and to have a safe network and then we can look to how those extra bits can be promoted and advertised and what else might be required. But of course, I will support this effort. Thank you. Councillor Knoll, sum up. Well, thank you for the contributions, but 
we already have uh, an infrastructure, maybe not to the standard that many would like, but we have it and it's, it already exists uh, and they are there. And there are safe routes into the city. There are enough uh, smaller laneways and things like that that would support uh, uh, cycling in, uh, cyclists. It's just that the access to them is a bit difficult. And this is a beginning to being able to do that. And then we can start to map out because having a, a route north and a route east west, it doesn't make the city uh, the city as a whole safer. It may give you some uh, some improved uh, safety along those routes, but they still need to get to the rest of the city. And th this is at least starts to highlight where uh, where the various uh, you know safer routes are. And also, uh, as we start to expand out the, uh, the various uh, network and things like that, we can highlight the easiest and the most efficient ways for us to. Uh, build those, that extra uh, higher quality network. Um, but right now, uh, we bring it down to these simplistic arguments all the time. And this is about getting people into the uh, into Adelaide through the parklands over main roads in a way that they want to. And it's about enabling and in a positive way, uh, you know, bringing them and delivering them into the city. And by doing all these small things, uh, making it uh, more and more easy and evident what they can do and are trying to make this uh, as a positive exercise rather than continuously debating a very narrow argument and it's important but we've got to work our way there and you know and that that can only happen with a goodwill and over time over to various uh, uh, you know terms of council which is what we haven't had today members to the vote those in favor those against, can I also have that shown as unanimous? Um, that takes us to Councillor Donovan. Thank you. Car share. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion. I move the motion as printed and seek seconder. I've got uh, Councillor. Sorry, I didn't have to see which hand went up. Councillor Hyde. Uh, look, thanks, Lord Mayor. This is a very simple motion. Um, it is simply to look beyond the current uh, way that we support or fail to support car, car share within the City of Adelaide, um, specifically noting that the average running cost of a medium-sized vehicle in South Australia is approximately $10,000. That's looking at rego, insurance, maintenance, petrol parking, etc. The average privately owned vehicle is unused 95% of the time, so sitting on our streets using our car parks. Every car share uh, typically supports, every car share car typically supports the reduction of approximately 10 privately owned vehicles. Hundreds of apartments have been uh, built recently and are being built within the city of Adelaide that do not have car parks attached to them. Purchasing a car park typically costs around $50,000 on top of the apartment costs. City businesses also use car share as a cheap fleet car alternative. Um, and car share, of course, alleviates the pressures on on-street parking in residential areas with high density. So it's pretty simple. We want to look beyond simply allowing another car share uh, business to enter the market and we want to actually look at ways we can support them because if we were to successfully um, attract a car share company that were able to expand within the city of Adelaide, the amount that we would save our residents and our businesses would of course then flow throughout our city and have huge impact on uh, uplift within the CBD and it would also have an array of flow and effects to both residents and to businesses. Simple motion and I hope that all councillors will support it. Thank you. Councillor Hart, did you wish to speak? Members? Yeah, just very briefly, Lord Mayor, I commend Councillor Don Donovan for bringing this to the Chamber. I think um, uh, this is uh, indirectly related to uh, many other projects and initiatives that uh, other members bring to the Chamber. Uh, might be about population growth, so if we are trying to attract a certain cohort, this is something that would be um, that we, they might see as an incentive. We might be talking about uh, traffic congestion. Again, this is something that can help that, so uh, uh, I endorse this, um, uh, this motion to the Chamber. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I also um, support this and want to thank uh, Councillor Donovan for um, putting this forward. I was um, really concerned to hear about uh, Go Get withdrawing from Adelaide. I have been contacted um, by residents uh, about that. Um, and I think it's precisely the kind of thing that we need to um, ensure is available in our city um, to encourage 
um, carbon neutrality and to uh, encourage people to um, reduce their carbon footprint. Um, so you know, I look forward to um, seeing what administration comes up with in response um, and uh, there being some further action on this. But I really thank uh, Councillor Donovan for her leadership in putting this forward. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, um, I'll also be supporting the motion, but uh, just a, a question through you, Lord Mayor, um, uh, to the administration. Uh, has there been uh, in the past, any formal EOI process for uh, car share arrangements? It, it obviously predated my time, and so I'm just just interested to uh, to know. Acting CEO, uh, through the chair, I need to take that on notice. Members, if not, go back to Councillor Donovan to sum up. Because I'm done, Lord Mayor. Members, to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. Oh, and another one passed unanimously. We're on a roll, guys. Um, we have uh, a few motions without notice. Um, I will take uh, Councillor the uh, seventeen point twelve, which is the Deputy Lord Mayor who's asked Councillor Hyde to move that motion on her behalf. Um, so seventeen point twelve, Councillor Hyde. Um, and, I, and I would just I would just flag that this has a slight um, change from the original, but I can flesh that out in my. Um, address, Lord Mayor. Okay, if so, I'll just put that there and I'll look for a seconder. Uh, Thank you, Lord, Councillor. No, 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 Lord oh. Mayor, I um, have a uh, safe conflict of interest given that this um, vaguely touches uh, some council assessment panel uh, it matters. It will have to go to cap, yep. Um, I'll excuse myself. Thank you. Let you guys talk it out. So, Councillor Hyde, I'm looking for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Connell. Um, so this this motion is is largely the same as what um, Councillor Kura's originally uh, suggested, which I understand was worked through with the administration. It's actually um, a request from a uh, business, which is the Golden Bottle, which is referred to in the motion, um, which exposed a, a gap in our policy and a deficiency of our policy um, regarding parklets and how we use or don't use parklets. Um, uh, ostensibly, it is that we uh, will not allow a parklet where it needs to be affixed to the road, even in a minor way. Of course, we look at parklets around uh, Adelaide and uh, many of them, and I'm thinking across the road from this business where Chief, we've been there for years. Just the fact that you can pick it up with a forklift without having to unscrew anything shouldn't really differentiate it anyway. Um, uh, so we do need a policy in place um, to do with, uh, to update um, uh, as we do with fresh proposals. Um, noting that you know prefabrication has come a long way, um, you can uh, design things uh, to be bespoke for a particular area that you want to put it in, um, uh, and what have you. So, uh, conscious as well that the original motion on the agenda wouldn't have actually achieved an outcome for this business anywhere probably within four to five months um, while the policy is being developed and worked through. I've suggested as well in green that we actually use them uh, as a test case. Um, so that we can get this underway, uh, but also that we can, through the rollout of that particular scheme, which is paid for by them, of course, um, we can work through and troubleshoot any issues that we come up with along the way. Now, um, not wanting to uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater and just prove something here, uh, the, you'll see you'll see in the motion as well. It, it talks about um, uh, seek final approval of the concept, including resolve stakeholder feedback on the loss of parking, etc. So that's actually in line with our existing on-street parking control policy, which is where you are changing on-street parking controls. You will go and consult um, with the surrounding area, which you know, could be up to 50 metres, which is a lot on Perry Street. Um, talking to some of the business owners down there, um, they're on-street parking there on Perry Street. Uh, it's, uh, they don't rely on it for their clientele as much. Um, uh, it's more so opportunistic parking that would otherwise go into um, an off-street car park or, or the, uh, perhaps trainees that can't park in those and, and what have you. So I don't think it'll be a massive loss. And I think a lot of the businesses around there would enjoy a little bit further activation and what have you. Nevertheless, um, it, this is still, uh, you know, it's still subject to the uh, normal process of consulting when you're changing on street parking um, and as well going to cap because it would need to be a uh, development approval um, because there'll be some bolts attaching it to the ground to make sure it doesn't move around. So um, uh, fairly straightforward. I hope to have members support 
um, for this. Uh, having looked at the designs, I think it is a really, really good proposal. I know some elected members have been approached about it as well. Um, uh, it's just uh, exposed a gap in our policy settings or lack thereof. So I think we should work towards fixing that. Thank you. I have Councillor Knoll as a seconder. So if you're right, Councillor Kerr. Uh, a question, Lord Mayor, to the administration through you about this. Um, Oops. Oh, Apologies. No, please, please continue. Um, the, uh, look, the administration uh, undertake uh, that, uh, or I'll put the administration, whether uh, they're confident that um, in reporting back, uh, ir irrespective or on top of uh, stakeholder feedback about the loss of parking spaces, uh, the issue of detrimental effect to other businesses, uh, particularly non hospitality businesses, uh, will be covered. Uh, even if there is no, because what I'm saying is sometimes you don't necessarily get adequate feedback, but there is still uh, an impact. Back to you, um, Through the presiding members, uh, that will be presiding member. Sorry, it's not plural. It's just one here tonight. <laughs> um, so me. Through the consultation, uh, that type of data is usually picked up. So if there's someone that's not necessarily um, impacted, um, that's usually or vice versa is impacted. That's usually picked up through the consultation, so you should be able to see that. Yes, thanks. I thank the administration for that, Lord Mayor. I, I'm just to clarify that that this element will actually be considered uh, alongside any f feedback to that effect. So that you, if you, even if you don't get uh, much or any feedback about this issue, you will still cover and analyse the detrimental impact on other businesses, particularly non. Hospitality, and that will be presented uh, as part of the, the report, yeah? Through the presiding member, should there be any, yes. Um, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I'm a bit confused, given that Councillor Abraham today has left the room because this matter may come to cap, okay. and yet the amendment that's proposed to what was <laughs> circulated says that Council will uh, approve the concept, including the results. So, which is the approving body, council or CAP? Acting C. Through the presiding member, both. And is that usual, uh, um, that CAP, CAP will get a report, I guess, from us saying we approve this and then you give us a decision or is there another? Acting C. Through the presiding member, uh, CAP will consider um, elements associated with its role, which will be a development application if necessary, and that will go through the processes that uh, CAP has, um, and then the other elements will come through to Council. Okay, so it's a, a, a multi-faceted decision, some of which will be taken by CAP, some of which will be taken by Council, is that correct? Acting C. Through the presiding member, yes. Thank you. And could the administration advise whether the Golden Wattle is the hotel or bar that operates on premises which are owned by the City of Adelaide? Through the presiding member, yes, the Golden Wattle is a tenant of the City of Adelaide. And, and is this the same Golden Wattle that um, uh, offers gambling and poker machines and the like on its premises? Through the chair. Thank you, Councillor Martin. And acting C. Thank you, presiding member. Uh, back through you to the chamber. Yes, Councillor Martin, uh, there was uh, much discussion um, some time ago in response to a, a motion um, asking that any council premises ban gambling, and it turned out that there was one premise um, as part of uh, the City of Adelaide's tenants that had gambling on the premises, and that was uh, the Golden Wattle. And, and could I ask the administration, is this proposal uh, likely to lead to uh, space moving to the footpath and then internally being used for gambling purposes? Acting CEO. Uh, thank you, presiding member. Back through the presiding member to the chamber. Um, Councillor Martin, I'm not sure because I haven't actually seen um, any paperwork designs or applications myself, so I'm unable to answer that. Okay. All right. Well, look, Lord Mayor, if I may speak for a moment. Um, look, I, I wouldn't ordinarily have a problem with parklets. Um, they, as you know, 
um, operated successfully during Splash Adelaide, and in fact, I think you, Lord Mayor, were associated with those. Um, and so, um, uh, Councillor Kouros or Councillor Hyde's uh, motion wouldn't ordinarily present me with a problem, but what we have is a property about which uh, councillors have expressed concern in relation to gambling, which is occurring on the premises. And if I cannot be assured that, that some use other than gambling is shifting to the footpath to allow further gambling or space for that gambling area, then I wouldn't be able to support this. Um, acting CEO. Uh, uh, thank you, Tom wants to provide some clarifications. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, CEO. Through you, presiding member, uh, just to provide a, a level of comfort, there's no intention to increase uh, the gambling space whatsoever. They're actually licensed for X amount of gaming machines and they, they're not permitted to go above that. And also to bring council back to its decision when they actually selected Golden Wall as a tenant. Um, effectively, they were happy to do that, noting the terms of the lease. And as we exit the lease, then we start to remove gambling facilities. They are the only facility that we have that has gambling and they would have to come to us if they wish to increase and we're, we're abiding by council's direction. Um, th th thank you, Lord Mayor, that doesn't help me. I'm asking whether not the number of machines increase, but whether the area that's devoted for gambling will increase uh, and be offset by the space on the footpath. That's the question I was asking. Acting Sydney. Thank you. Um, the answer remains the same. Um, I'm not sure of the internal configuration. That's it's up to you then tonight to make a decision based on your own um, data and awareness. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Councillor Hyde. Yeah, I think we should just remember that it was um, sort of the communication from the City of Adelaide that brought about this proposal in the first place. Um, we're encouraging people to look at more options for outdoor dining, which is precisely why the Golden Wattle um, uh, has suggested this. Now, of course, they've suggested something which is um, uh, which is out outside of the scope of what we would ordinarily allow because they want to do a very, very good and high quality job. Um, uh, and that's and that's why our policy, it doesn't fit into our policy as it is. But I think particularly in the context now, I mean, I think um, Associate Director McCready uh, has, or Acting Director McCready has outlined that there is no, there's been no request put to us as the landlord to reconfigure the interior of the building. I would quite honestly be very, very surprised if in this capacity restricted environment, um, uh, a, a business is looking to um, sacrifice some of their already limited hospitality space in preference of other gambling space, particularly considering that they know that uh, as soon as that lease is finished, the, the pokey machines are out. So um, uh, it seems like a fairly poor business decision uh, to make and they should be pivoting their business model away from this. And in fact, that's actually what I think this is. This is allowing them uh, space to be competitive to serve more customers uh, and to allow them to pivot their business model away from gambling and pivot their business model away from pokey machines, um, which we know so many uh, clubs and pubs um, uh, rely on. Uh, so if we want there to be a viable business here, um, that has, no, it's, but it's, is, it, is it not true? Is it not true? They're putting more customers in this spot. They're putting more customers in this spot, selling more GNTs and more beers, and more GNTs and more beers means they need less pokies. It's a fairly simple equation. Um, and I think it's a far shorter bow to draw than it is for Councillor Martin to invent some proposal that they're gonna double their interior area dedicated to gambling because we've given them, uh, you know, what is it, nine square meters of parking space, not even. Um, uh, out the front. I think, I think, I think let's, let's get back to basics here. The City of Adelaide said COVID has happened. Um, you've got more capacity outside. I think it's four, four square metres per person at the moment. Actually, I think it's two. Um, you've got more capacity outside. Um, so we're going to encourage you to expand your outdoor dining. Um, some businesses have space on the footpath to do that. Other businesses do not have space on the footpath to do that, which has given rise um, uh, to this proposal um, from, uh, from this business, which does include a lot of greening and is very high quality design. But because of the high quality of design, it will need some bolts 
to go into um, the Asheville, and that is why it can't fit within our current policies. And that subsequently is also why it needs to go um, to CAC because it is, it is essentially a fixed structure. Um, uh, and that's that's why you know we need sort of two approving bodies at the moment. So I commend this motion to you. Uh, I think it supports a business that's come up with an innovative and high quality solution to a modern COVID problem. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims, Councillor Ho, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Canole. Uh, now, members, I did receive several motions without notice. Um, I had a motion without notice from Councillor Moran. Um, I'm not going to accept that as there's no um, uh, time sensitivity around this, so that I'll put that on the agenda for April, Councillor Moran. Um, I did have one from uh, Councillor Mackey. Um, again, I did actually um, leave a message for you so I could speak to you today. I'm sorry, I'm, I know that um, there is uh, an imposed time sensitivity, but um, again, there's sort of major budget implications and I think this needs to be informed by administration comment. So therefore I'm gonna take this one on notice in the April meeting. Um, I also had a motion without notice from Councillor Hyde, which I have asked to go into the April meeting. Yes. Um, I did not understand that uh, motions without notice had to be time sensitive. I missed the cut off time by a very short period of time. Um, this is an easy motion. Um, I don't see at all. I have some questions about administrative um, messages to councillors on this. So I'd ask you to reconsider that. Okay, so um, it is under regulation um, 12, so uh, number, which is basically that motions without notice should be limited to matters that are time sensitive and would not require input from administration to inform decision making or expenditure of funds, which is basically our two premise, which is about time sensitivity and budget impacts. So um, I won't be accepting those motions without notice this evening. Thank you, members. Um, I will actually also go back to. Um, um, in, our, in our own standing orders, members, um, we did actually support uh, an adjustment to the standing orders that said at 230, to support publication of agenda in accordance with standing order 200, the notice to place a motion on notice is requested by 5 p.m. on Monday prior to the publication of the agenda. Um, members, as you can see by the numbers of motions on notice we have tonight, uh, the flood usually comes in between three and five o'clock on Wednesday, which allows very little time for administration to actually be able to uh, get comment back or for us to discuss with members um, uh, wording or other things that can actually work with the motion. Um, I would implore you to try and use that five o'clock Monday uh, cutoff deadline, if at all possible, um, so that we can actually um, try and process those motions through the organisation. Um, it is in trying, in trying to get that agenda out within a 24 hour turnaround, uh, it really is quite impacting our staff. So again, um, if, mo if members can put their motions in by the five o'clock Monday, it would be much appreciated as per our own standing orders. I would understand that, Lord Mayor, if we had regular meetings, but this delays it by a month. And I'd just like to make a personal explanation. The reason I'm moving this, I moved some time ago. Um, um, sorry, I Councillor Moran, I don't need an explanation because I've actually ruled that we're not accepting well, it tonight. Thank you. I'm going back to the agenda. Uh, members, that takes us to item eight on the agenda, um, which is the petition. And I'll ask for someone to move the petition be noted. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, uh, the petition is noted. Sorry, we are back on page oh, uh, Yeah, I don't actually have these numbered, so. Um, members, that takes us to the recommendations of the Reconciliation Committee, 9.1, we have two recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, and a seconder, Councillor Knoll. Uh, Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Knoll. Members, 
Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I, I just uh, wish to draw to everybody's attention that uh, the documents which were uh, not supplied um, show uh, for me a, a disturbing feature, and that is that the stretch reconciliation action plan um, for the previous period uh, ending in 2021 um, uh, contains just so many, and I've listed them here, so many pink spots saying uh, pending, I put pink spots there, I'm sorry, but, but there are just so many pending issues um, uh, that range from um, exploring business opportunities for Ghana, to involving them in planning processes, to involving them in the parklands. I'm very happy to respond to that, Councillor. Sorry? I'm happy to respond to yes, that. Yes, yeah. And um, additionally, not even um, the um, uh, the acquisition of positive images of uh, Ghana people for use by the city in publications, not even that has been achieved. And, and I, know, I know you're very good and that you uh, do uh, use a Ghana language welcome when you go to events and the like, and you acknowledge at the same time. But I, I just fear that we're not doing enough. Just saying Thank you. Um, Councillor Martin, as the co-chair of Reconciliation Committee, um, the uh, Aboriginal community and Torres Strait Islander community were severely impacted by COVID to the point that we had very few meetings last year. Um, they also weren't able to attend meetings on Zoom and on uh, a lot of them uh, aren't using that technology. Um, many of those actions have actually been commenced but not completed and we're also working with the community. There have been many meetings now to look at our next stretch wrap. Um, the community consultation has been extensive and also incorporates anything that hasn't been delivered in the previous plan. Um, and then may I ask then Lord Mayor as co-chair of the committee, will those, and it is the 2018-21 uh, stretch plan, will those things which have not been achieved uh, for the three year period uh, that the report applies to move to 21-24? That will be up to the Reconciliation Committee and of course the community consultation that we've done. So part of the community consultation with Aboriginal Torres Strait Islanders, uh, people have been to get them to review anything that was in the previous stretch wrap, what has been achieved, what we haven't managed to achieve, uh, what has been in progress, and they themselves have then had a discussion about what they would take forward into the next stretch wrap. So some of those things may, may not appear in the next stretch wrap. Um, we are working through that uh, final engagement and that's coming into our reconciliation committee, which you're all welcome to join us, of course, um, in the next couple of months. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, members, I'll go to Council High to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. And I do thank you for your question, Councillor Martin, because um, the reconciliation uh, officer um, and the team have worked really hard to do what they can. But as you would be aware, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander have been impacted more severely than any other community group. And uh, therefore, we've been um, uh, really enjoying working towards the next stretch run. Uh, members, I have Um, members, we're going to reports for council. I'm going to uh, ask if any of these reports can be taken on block. So please uh, let me know if there's anything that you would like to pull out. So 10.1, 10.2. 10.2. 10.3. 10.4. 10.5. 10.6. 10.7. 10.8. 10.9. 10.10. 10.11. 10.12. 10.13. 10.14. 10.15. 10.16. 10.17. 10.18. 10.19
<laughs> Sorry, I was just clarifying. We had the wrong parts. So parts one and three. I have to come back to part two. Um, and 10.8. Councillor Knopf? You're calling that one out? Oh, sorry. Could you speak into your microphone if you are doing conflict? I have received conflict of interest on 10.8. Okay. Are you staying in the chamber? I'm staying in the chamber, but I won't vote. Thank you. Um, can you tell us what your perceived conflict of interest is for the record? Well, I'm a trader at the central market. Thank you very much. Well, do we have to do that separately? Otherwise, council can all might do this all the others. Uh, I'll yes, vote for know. that one separately if he's got a conflict. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. So members, uh, we're going to the vote in 10.6 and 10.7 parts one and three. Those in favour? Those against? My apologies, I need a mover that they go on block. Thank you, Councillor Hyde and the seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Um, can I go now? Yes. <laughs> we've got two. So we've got 10.6 uh, and parts one and three of 10.7. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried and uh, I need a mover for 10.8. Thank you, Councillor Martin, seconder, Councillor Hyde. Uh, members? Sorry, sorry, Lord Mayor, I was just going to call out a perceived conflict of interest as well um, because I'm on the board. It's not a benefit to me either way, but I'll sit here, but I won't vote. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, members, I'm looking for someone to move 10.8. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, Signet Councillor Martin. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Thank you, that is carried. Um, one, two. So, we go back to 10.1, Councillor Hyde. Um, I'll move it all as is, um, but I understand the move against to decide whether it's taken in parts in consultation with you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to take it in parts because I don't want to vote for three. So you've moved it. I'm looking for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. And and Councillor Hyde, you're asking for part three, correct? At, at least separately, yes. To yeah. be done separately. Yeah. Okay. And it's just it's just because I'm, I just don't think the try before you buy has much merit, to be honest. I, Commend the administration. Oh, sorry, I just have to ask Councillor Sims, are you happy to take that in part as well? Thank you. Um, you know, I commend the administration for looking at it. I think we need to try you know, many things. Um, I just, I just, you know, I'm, I can be a pretty lateral thinker sometimes, but I just can't see a way that this can work. Honestly, I don't know who's going to open their home up. I don't know why they would do it for free. Um, I don't know whether they're expecting the place to be furnished or not, or I just, sorry, yeah, sorry. Sorry, just going to clarify. Um, I don't think we had gone to that level of scoping, councillor. So um, the recommendation was built, was predicated on um, administration doing some work uh, to explore what this concept could look like, including a business case um, to be presented back to council. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you my view is that I don't even, don't even continue progressing. With it. That's my view, personally. Um, you know, if the, if the chamber thinks otherwise, and you know, I'm just an idiot, then I'm very pleased to be proved wrong. Um, but I just don't see any way, even because, and usually when you've got sort of leads to follow up with on policies, administration will say, oh, we'll look at this one and we'll look at that one. And we'll there's not even any ideas in there around leads that we can follow up, or, you know, potential ideas that we can explore more. It's just a try before you buy things, it's just lobbed out there. I just don't think it'll work, honestly. And I think we've got a lot more that we can be doing work-wise um, in the city, and I just think you should focus on that, that's all. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Well, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm um, broadly uh, supportive of this. I definitely think we need to have more young people living and working in the city. I guess my only um, concern is that the focus that it has on home ownership, um, which I think for a range of structural reasons is uh, not going to be possible for um, a lot of um, millennials. 
Um, a lot of young people are not in a position to be able to afford to buy their own home. Um, we don't have enough um, social housing or affordable housing in the CBD, um, and the rights of renters are not um, protected sufficiently um, by the state government. So if we're wanting to make Adelaide a really attractive place to live for young people, the reality is most young people in our city will be renting. Um, they're not necessarily going to be um, homeowners. Now, I, I note um, in um, the question and answer session we had um, last week, um, I was not able to comment because um, we can't comment in committee, but I did seek to um, ask some questions about that. Um, and I understand that it, um, the view is that that's a separate um, piece of work to the issue around um, home ownership. Um, but I do see it as being linked because um, this strategy is meant to be about encouraging young people to live and work in the city. Um, so, you know, this is fine. I'm happy to support this. Um, but I would encourage uh, council and administration to look at what we can do to address those structural issues. Um, members may recall, um, after I was elected to council back in 2018, I uh, initiated that policy work around affordable housing and social housing. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that coming back to this chamber because I hope that that will address some of those structural issues uh, that I don't see have been covered um, in, that, in this work. Members, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, Lord Mayor, look, I'm inclined to agree with uh, Councillor Hyde um, with regard to try before you buy. Um, I can't imagine a circumstance in which I would allow um, someone to live in my property um, in whatever state it is, furnished, unfurnished, with windows open or no doors, um, just to see how they feel about it. Um, it seems to me that that would be um, a fairly risky thing for any property owner um, or investor to contemplate. Um, additionally, I, I am. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, that's because it's, I, I will clarify something in a minute once you've finished speaking. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Um, so yes, it, it you know, it, um, and I do remember the night it was proposed, and it was very late, and we're all pretty tired. But um, I, even at that time, I think people were wildly sceptical. Um, but additionally, uh, I, I am uh, a bit worried about the scoping of the graduate retention strategy, which is all about um, uh, internships and subsidised housing in partnership with the state and others, uh, including universities, um, to attract pretty much a particular demographic, that is um, people who are uh, university educated uh, and who might be persuaded through um, uh, specialised subsidy programs or grant programs, I would assume, um, to take up residence in the city. And, you know, look, there are a lot of people um, who are in different demographics who I'd like to see in the city. And, and this kind of discriminates in favour of a particular person, that is, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. Don't, the reason I say that can, uh, well, is because it's about attracting more manel, ma millennials to live in the city. I, so it is about a particular demographic. I understand, but it's a subgroup of a demographic. We're scoping a graduation retention strategy via a high-performing graduate internship and subsidised housing package in partnership with state government, the universities and the private sector, including budget implications for further consideration by council in 21, uh, uh, I'm assuming the budget. So, you know, that, that too leaves me a little concerned because there are many worthy groups in the community of millennials who wouldn't fit that profile and who I'd like to see here in the city. Um, and additionally, I must say, um, I would like a bit more detail about the under 40s city living reference group. Um, I'd like to know, are we recruiting a particular kind of person? Uh, will they all be people who walk around in colourful shirts or, you know, will they be people with parrots on their left shoulder? There's no real criteria there. And, and so it's a, it's a bit vague and in part silly for me to support. Um, members, can I just, I'm just going to go back to the original motion. So um, I asked 
Councillor Hyde, who was my deputy at the time, to take the motion through the chamber. It really was very specific to millennials. Um, as you know that I hosted the 40 Under 40 group and they gave us some great feedback. Um, the try before you buy is not try a house and live in a house before you decide to purchase it. It's, it is a, uh, a, a saying that you try before you buy so that someone could actually try before they rent, try before they, you know, it's not about purchasing. It was actually about how someone tries to live in the city and what the experience is of living in the city um, before they rent or they buy. So I'm um, sorry it's been interpreted so literally, um, but it was never meant to be a literal interpretation of a try before you buy. It's, it's saying. Um, the other one, uh, Councillor Martin, is in terms of the graduate retention strategy, uh, was very specific to what they're, they're hoping to get, uh, particularly through Lot 14 with the new industries that are coming through, uh, tech, cyber, space, um, AI, et cetera, so that we can actually keep some of that talent here. So um, if there are other things that we can do in this space, we'd be very, very happy to uh, accept them. Now, I have Councillor Kerra. And just before we go to um, the vote, I know we go on break. I've speak before. I, I've no, got I know, sorry, I just wanted yeah. to declare a potential. Uh, Councillor Martin, in um, commenting about the potential partnership with universities, has flagged my um, uh, awareness um, that, of course, I work for a university. I do finish um, at the end um, of this month, um, but it could be considered a perceived um, conflict of interest for me. So, given it's going to be taken in parts, um, I will uh, not um, vote on part four Thank you. Um, or engage in discussion on that particular proposal so that there can be no... Uh, Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, I've got Councillor Kira and then Councillor Abraham today. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, so on the try before you buy, I think therein lies the problem. Uh, I think the problem is illustrated sort of irrespective of the substance of the debate. Um, to, to be honest, um, I, I, look, obviously it's with all good intentions and I mean, we, I, we wouldn't want to disparage uh, good ideas being put forward by the administration. The intention is not to do that. I think on balance though, the, the, the thing with the try before you buy, it's, it's so easily mocked uh, and it is so easily something the media could just pick up, uh, cherry pick and uh, cast aspersions on the council with, I, th I actually think that the, the cons outweigh the pros with that one. and I. I won't be voting for that one. With the graduate retention strategy number four, I uh, agree with Councillor Martin. I think there is an issue here where you've got uh, clearly stated subsidised housing uh, applicable only to university graduates. Well, everyone would probably consider that university graduates by and large are a privileged cohort. Uh, the vast bulk of ratepayers are not university graduates, I suspect we'll find. Um, and I think, I don't think it's a good look. And I, it's lot 14, but I don't believe that lot 14 is a kind of magic uh, in, uh, incantation. You can just put on something and say, well, you know, it just means that we should accept uh, a subsidising, uh, a, a subsidising that doesn't really, I think, pass muster if you consider uh, the current situation and status. And so I can't support either of those. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, just a couple of uh, couple of points about housing. Um, there, there's a lot of talk about you know affordable housing, social housing, community housing. Um, uh, social housing is something that we don't really play a part in. That's uh, state government and federal government. Uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to accommodation and housing, uh, we heavily rely on on state government uh, legislation and, and policies. So, uh, you know, the, really, the best that we can do is either use our own land uh, or to lobby the state government to change some of the legislation and their fees and their taxes and their policies. Um, there's a lot of talk about this try before you buy. I actually like the idea. I think when it comes to uh, you know when it comes to um, uh, a car or, or some of the other assets, you do go and try before you buy. Um, I know with the house, it's 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 different. It's the the, the, the concept uh, I think is, is good. 
uh, I'm actually keen to see uh, the options or uh, you know the sort of work that gets done uh, in that space. So uh, um, other councillors have uh, have their perspective, uh, but I think that's a, that's a great concept, and I'm, uh, um, hopefully if it does get approved. Um, I'm looking forward to the final details. And finally, uh, Lord Mayor, the under 40s um, reference group. I think that's a that's a great idea. Get the the cohort, the people that you want to attract into the city. Get them around the round table, have a conversation, and see uh, um, what they're attracted to. Um, we know that uh, a little while ago, the state government actually did, did a similar sort of thing. They put a uh, a group together uh, of mainly under forties. They called it Force Forty, and what they're doing is they're working with that group to make Adelaide a magnet city. So why won't we tap into something like that and build on it? So uh, uh, I'm actually excited about this, and I'm keen to see uh, what comes out of this. Thank you. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm pretty agnostic about the track for you by, um, but I do note that the Renew program, which relates to commercial buildings, has been hugely successful. So if we're using that as a consideration, then it could be interesting to at least scope out um, this for residential tenancies, given the huge number of apartments, et cetera, that are going up at the moment. Um, Bree, the graduate retention strategy, uh, noting the previous councillor's comments regarding focusing in on university graduates, that is true. The background documents that we have received refer to university graduates, but they don't exclude other graduates. So it could be that actually we uh, extend out the notion and look at uh, other graduates, i.e. graduates from TAFE, um, graduates from other courses beyond simply university, particularly given the huge number of um, building and construction jobs that would be going in the city at the moment. I can see there would equally be desire for uh, those workers to be living in the city. So it could be that through that scoping uh, process, we also consider other graduates um, from other forms of uh, study. Thank you, uh, Councillor Donovan. Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I also have a few, I mean, a lot of concerns about item three and item four. I couldn't, I mean, just as, just, just as add on to other members' comment about number, I mean, on number three, that if a tenant damage a property, the landlord will have landlord insurance in place. If a purchaser, purch, I mean, have signed a contract and during the set, I mean, Right before settlement, if the house burned down, you have got uh, con I mean, you have got property insurance in place. But I spoke to a finance um, um, uh, uh, insurance broker today, and there's no policies in place to protect both parties. I mean, this what what what, what the person can I mean, the trial there's no policies in place for the trial, so you can't you can't just you can't protect anyone who actually come into the property to relieve or try. It's different as cars and different as commercial properties. Residential lease and commercial lease are very different, so I will not be able to support item three, and I don't think we should take the risk to go down to that path. It's just a lot of potential risk. Item four, I feel actually I actually feel quite uncomfortable about item four, as I see that that is a double standard. And thank you, thank you, Councillor Martin, for raising that part. Thank you. Uh, members, I do actually agree with Councillor Donovan that a graduate, it doesn't say university graduate retention, it is actually supposed to be quite broad, um, as all of these are, so that they can scope them out and bring them back to Council. Um, members, any other speakers? If not, I will go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Thank you. Uh, members, we're going to take it in parts. Um, so we will go. Uh, we were actually just going to take part three in parts. Uh, no, we asked to, for part three to be in parts. No, it was part three in parts, so I'm going to go part yeah, we did say part three and parts. Okay, members, I'm going to look to uh, council four parts so, one. Sorry, do you need another second? Oh, so the council seems to No, we don't. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Um, uh, parts one, two, four, and five. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. 
and I'm going to go to part three, which is try before you test drive. <laughs> Moments to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Thank you, members. Uh, that takes us to 10.2, Disabled Parking Residential Permit Zones. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, I move as printed, Lord Mayor. I look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, thank you. Um, look, I, I wonder, before I begin, if I can ask the administration um, whether they would consider um, working with Disability SA and other organisations of a similar nature um, to promote this initiative. It's not mentioned within the motion, but um, it would seem to me that it's a trial, something about which the city should be proud and something that deserves to be promoted. Acting CEO, you're happy to take that as an undertaking? Through the presiding member, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, uh, in moving this uh, four months ago, um, uh, thought this would take uh, just a short time. It's taken six months, and I must say to the administration, um, it was worth every month that was expended. Um, they went away um, with a, a problem, and uh, in a demonstration of really good practice, um, uh, went away and talked to uh, permit holders, uh, uh, residential parking, uh, permit holders um, and the city's access and inclusion committee, among others, um, to see how we would overcome the problem, which is that there are um, about 12,000 uh, on-street parking spaces in the city, but only uh, 163 on-street disability parking spaces, which means people with disabilities and sometimes um, uh, disabilities that do restrict substantially uh, mobility find those 163 spaces are often a very long way from where they need to be. Um, so they park wherever they have to and very often that means that they fall foul of uh, our rules related to parking and they're expiated. Uh, and indeed that was the case in uh, uh, the motivation for this uh, motion that, uh, that I brought to council. Now, under the trial um, proposed by the administrations, uh, residents eligible for visitor permit booklets and those who hold a disability permit as well will be able to purchase uh, the booklets and then issue uh, the, uh, the tickets uh, on a one-off basis to visitors and they'll have the ability uh, to use a, a residential parking uh, space for a two-hour period. Um, now this may work or it may not work. Um, I think the administration is saying let's give it a go for six months and I think that's a really positive step forward. We are actually doing something innovative and uh, scoping it out to see whether it will work and I do commend this to, uh, to members. I hope that you'll support it. It is a really good initiative. Councillor Moran. Uh, members. No, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. That is carried. Can that be recorded as unanimous, please? Uh, members, we go to 10.3, Strategic Asset Management, oh. Councillor Hyde. And I'll look for a... Uh, uh, I have a, a slight alternate motion. Uh, it's just adding the red round four consultation. Um, so, members, I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Hyde. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. Members would um, uh, have read, of course, the document, which is an incredibly important document. And it's probably actually, uh, well, it's a part of the most important work that this council is going to do, which is have a serious think about its assets. Um, while it's doing that, it needs to be able to bring the community with them and engage the community and talk to them about this incredibly important piece of work. The, um, uh, the administration report uh, speaks about um, a legislative requirement for consultation, and that's fair enough. But given the magnitude of, of this 
overall undertaking, which is the strategic asset management plan, and then the other asset management plans that then come about as a result of that, um, I think it's really important that we engage our community on the principles that are going to inform the strategic part of it, um, because that then guides the administration in producing the rest of the work. And I'll just remind administration, uh, sorry, members, um, if I can rattle off some of why I think this is the most important work we'll do in this term of council. Um, the next financial year, we're going to spend uh, just under $50 million on our infrastructure. Um, that's an increase of $40 million on this year, um, where, of course, projects have been delayed due to COVID. But the year after that, we're spending $43 million. Then we're spending uh, 46, uh, 45 again, 46 again, 45 again, 46 again, $83 million, uh, $98 million, and then $98 million again in year 30, 31 um, on infrastructure. The strategic asset management plan is going to inform how we uh, prioritise and the principles that go into how we plan for these works. Um, and I'm very excited to see some, some highly detailed forward planning. Um, uh, that really does excite me. I know it's not the most interesting topic, but as you can see, it's one of our biggest, uh, biggest budget lines we have in the city of Adelaide. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate that um, we were new a couple of years ago and perhaps we didn't delve into the books as much as we could have, but, you know, we, we still had around $40 million of infrastructure projects sitting there in our budget, yet we were only provided with a, a 10 or at best $15 million snapshot of what it was actually being spent on. Um, now is the time that we can go to the community and talk to them around uh, what things do you want to see prioritised? How would you, what are, the, what are the principles that you would have underpin how we manage our assets within the city? Um, uh, noting that, of course, safety and mitigating risk and, and uh, renewing at the most opportune time to avoid costs down the track, you know, those, those should be some of the things that um, we have in there. But uh, we need to talk to our community around whether they want us to look at um, uh, you know, environmental and wastewater components, whether they want us to look at footpaths and prioritise them, whether they want, it, want us to look at things like river torrents and water courses and what have you. Now is the time for us to talk to them about that. This motion achieves that um, uh, through the usual consultation means, instead of just chucking it on your say, I'm hoping that two or three people respond to it. Thank you, Councillor Abraham Stay, did you wish to speak? Uh, members, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, Lord Mayor. Look, um, uh, I understand the work that the administration has put into this and that it represents a considered approach um, to the management of our assets. Um, but in order to accept this asset management plan, one has to accept uh, the long-term financial plan for this council. And uh, I do not uh, accept that long-term financial plan. Um, I think it is a flawed financial plan um, driven by our dire financial circumstances where we will have uh, borrowings in excess of $210 million unless we sell $60 million worth of assets. That's part of our long-term financial plan. And it's driven by um, what I suspect is um, a, a, a philosophy that has not been consulted or widely considered. In fact, not talked to our ratepayers. And if I accept this asset management plan, then I also accept that 5.4, a number of our assets provide services not only for our local community, but also the greater metropolitan area. With consideration of these services, there is opportunity to street, strategically reconsider ownership and management um, through strategically divesting specific assets. Now, I don't agree with that. Um, and, and I think that there has been a lack of consideration of what we're doing, particularly selling um, assets which are providing a substantial return on investment, um, including, uh, Lord Mayor, the uh, Piri Street car park. Um, the administration will not provide how much it returns to us, either in dollars or percentage terms, but that's one of the assets that we're divesting ourselves on. This is, in my way of thinking, uh, something that ought to have been considered much more carefully in a different context and with proper advice, external consultants' advice, um, uh, auditors with experience in these matters, uh, not a plan which has come through the administration from the elected body and is driven by needs, that is, to find as much money as we can to pull ourselves out of the poo. Lord Mayor, 
um, I will not be voting for this, and I urge members also to reject it. Otherwise, you're accepting the long-term financial plan and the sale of assets that have made this city and contributed to our capacity to offer lower rates to our residents and our businesses. Um, we sell those assets, we start to lose income, we start to lose the capacity to borrow. Um, it is ill-considered. Thank you. Members, uh, Councillor Hodge, you had a question? Can I just ask that um, the administration clarify the relationship between the strategic asset management plan and the long-term financial plan? Acting C. I beg your pardon, Councillor Martin. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I was talking to Councillor Hodge. Sorry, well, I thought, yeah, um, to the presiding member. Um, yes, there's obviously a long-term financial plan is informed by um, asset management planning. Um, as members are aware, there are three statutory plans that a council must have. One is a strategic plan, one is a long-term financial plan, and one is a, a strategic asset management plan. Um, this component forms that third part. Um, which is why um, that's being progressed at the moment. Uh, it's been some time since uh, the Council has reviewed um, its approach to strategic asset management and then in following on from that, its approach to asset management generally. Um, in terms of um, uh, the divestment of assets um, through the workshops that uh, the team has undertaken, when that has been questioned, that's also things like assets that we currently look after that no other local government looks after, such as certain roads. So there might be an opportunity or um, the community might be interested in what are those assets that they currently pay for that no other local government entity in South Australia might pay for. So it's things like that, not just in relation to its property assets. Uh, members, if not, I'll go Councillor Hyde to sum up. Councillor Hyde. Um, I just, could I just ask a question? That figure of $210 million in debt, is that accurate? Or am I getting confused? Because I'm certain we only had 143. I thought it was 149. At the end of, um, yeah, 149. At, yeah, 149. Yeah, the yeah, long-term financial plan. Uh, sorry, it's acting CE. Uh, thank you to the presiding members. Sorry, I'm just finding it a bit challenging when council members are asking question and another council member is sort of answering it. Um, so uh, for a QF2, I think it was near 149 million. Obviously that does change quarter to quarter um, and we report that regularly. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Did you wish to sum up? Um, yeah, I would just, I would just uh, briefly sum up by saying that um, I really want to commend the administration because our our long-term financial plan and our strategic asset management plan, they've ticked the leg legislative box, but um, if I can be rather blunt, I think they've, I think they've historically been uh, dumb plans in a sense. They haven't been as strategic targeted as they can. Um, uh, and I really want to commend the administration, um, particularly with the long-term financial plan um, uh, and clearing that up and presenting those uh, finances very, very clearly to us. Um, uh, but also because that really helps us when thinking about our strategic asset management plan um, as well. And when I say dumb plan, I'm not saying that it was an awful plan and what have you. I'm saying, why are there things like a $50 million write-off of the Rundle U Park just lobbed in year eight, nine, this financial plan? You know, why, why are we now going to renew the whole bridge at once and why haven't we had a sinking fund up to that point? And that, that's something that could be in a strategic asset management plan, for example. So um, I think we're seeing a real shift away from dumb plans to smart plans. I think the software that was shown to elected members in the workshop, I understand, probably would have illustrated that point um, quite well with a predictive modelling of when you uh, might best be renewing your infrastructure um, is really good as well. But uh, it's, it's, I, I don't accept the long-term financial plan as it is, Councillor Martin. And I'll, I'll, I'll declare that right now. I think, I think if we... If we look at if we look at our strategic asset management plan um, and look at our, what our community expects from their assets within the city, um, uh, you might be able to think about changes 
uh, particularly on the building slide, noting that buildings are included in the SAM. Building that building, that fifty million dollar Rundle U Park, is included, or it might even be fifty five from memory, is included um, uh, uh, in the long term financial plan. There, okay. Well, why don't we talk to our community around? Do, do you still want that car park there? Uh, do you want to keep it as it is? Do you want to consider a future development opportunity as a prime site in the city? You know, I think these are the decisions we need to make and we need to have that discussion alongside our community. And that's why we've put in there talking about stakeholders, talking about the community, talking about workshops, roundtables and a public forum as well, um, uh, because I really want to know what they think of this. This is if we're spending just shy of six hundred million dollars on infrastructure over the next 10 years and the SAM is going to be informing how the other asset management plans are done and how we go about uh, executing that expenditure. This is the most important thing that this council will decide on. This is the biggest budget item. This is the thing that we cannot afford to get wrong. That's why I want to hear from the community about it. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members that... Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand, remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Ho, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Carer, Councillor Canoe and Councillor Abraham today. Members, that takes us to 10.4, which is the Barton Terrace West Landscaping. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, I have an alternative motion, Lord Mayor. No. And it replaces one. It says, notes that the installation of instant turf and irrigation did not meet the design concept design presented to residents in 2017 and requests the administration complete the approximate 200 metres opposite 164 to 192 that require turf and investigate adjusting the installed golf course sprinklers on the edge of the project to irrigate in a 360 degree rotation. Can I ask you, Councillor, if you could just read that back, make sure we've captured everything? Um, uh, the alternative motion replaces one, so uh, this is a new one. Three, four, and five to remain. Three, four, and five are to remain. Okay. Could I just ask you to read that back, just to, to not out loud, but just to make yeah, sure that sure. we've captured it? Um, I think the last, on the very last line, it said um, of the project to irrigate in a 360 rotation, and uh, it would be 164 to 192 Barton Terrace. Yes, that's correct. Other than that, I think we have it. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, you for a seconder. Um, look, can I make it clear that the uh, the residents, and I'm sure you've all read the, uh, the report from the administration, um, the residents I've spoken to will accept, um, uh, as they're obliged to, of course, the possibility of an upgrade in uh, 2016 to uh, the curbing, 2026, sorry, uh, at the earliest. That's another five years plus. Um, uh, they explained to me today, they understand our financial circumstances and frankly were being optimistic in asking us um, to complete the job along the lines that they had hoped. But they were promised turfing and irrigation. A and in respect of that part uh, referred to in the amendment, we did not deliver that. We just did not deliver that. And despite the administration saying, as it does in this report, at uh, 
Um, there is nothing in the links that they have supplied, nothing in the documents at all to say that they, um, as it is inferred, um, uh, consulted uh, ratepayers and said, uh, we're changing the scope. There's just nothing there. They don't remember receiving anything either. So uh, we are left with a group of ratepayers who contend daily with an area of parkland that they expected was going to be turfed. Um, and which um, for about 200 metres is um, uh, constantly being churned up uh, with dust and mulch and other things and that is deposited on their properties and it is them and annoyance. Now I understand that. Um, I, uh, I understand that they would feel pretty miserable about as one uh, elderly uh, ratepayer said to me going out on my balcony and not feeling as though I can use it because everything is constantly covered in dirt and muck. So um, this, uh, this bit of uh, turf um, is not a big job. It is um, 200 metres long, varying widths. Um, my guess is in the research that I and they have done is that there are uh, a few pallets of turf required. I don't know how many, they're $300 a pallet. We have sensational landscaping staff who could whip down there and put the turf down on the ground in no time at all. And then, uh, hey presto, uh, grumpy residents become happy residents. And that's all I'm asking for. With one other um, uh, request to the administration, um, we did install irrigation. Uh, it may predate the 2017 project and it is a perfectly fine irrigation system. It squirts water everywhere towards the golf course, but not to the area that we turfed and we replanted. We have, for some reason, uh, allowed 180 degree um, rotation on those sprinklers and not the other way. And all I'm asking is that the administration investigate whether we can actually put a head on the, uh, the, the irrigation system so that it goes round 360 degrees. Now, I know there are some, if you'll pardon the pun, turf issues. Um, that is the golf course, and this is a residential piece of land, um, or at least a, a, a piece of parkland opposite uh, residences. But Lord Mayor, it, it is such a tiny request that's being put to us, uh, and I would ask that, uh, that members consider the possibility of assisting people in this way. Councillor Ryan, did you wish to speak? Yes. Councillor Hyde. <laughs> Could I just suggest a very slight variation, just noting noting the costs, and that's after um, uh, line line four, Barton Terrace West, that required turf, comma, to be funded from any Q3 carry forwards, yeah. comma, yeah. Um, Councillor Martin, are you happy to accept that? Um, yeah, a quick question to the administration. Will, it, will there be any Q3 carry forward? <laughs> see Through the presiding member, history tells us there will be Councillor. I and Councillor Rand, are happy to accept that? Uh, Councillor Martin and Councillor Rand have both accepted that. Did you wish to speak to it at all? No, no it's quite um, So, members, if not, I'll go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. That is carried. You spoiled my record, <laughs> Councillor Sins. That is carried almost <laughs> unanimously. Um, members, that takes us to 10.7. Um, now, it is a procedural, sorry, I've just lost my page. Um, this is for the National General Assembly of Local Government. Um, so, I uh, will ask nominations because I can do point two. Um, and replace the word councillor with the council member um, if I can have a nomination for representation. <laughs> yes, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I nominate Councillor Donovan. Councillor Donovan, do you accept the nomination? Uh, one okay. Are there any other nominations, members? Sure. Councillor Hyde? Can I just ask, what, what's the cost of sending someone over? Uh, it was in the a, report, was it? Sorry, I don't have it in front of um, me. I don't have that figure to hand, so one moment. Maybe we can start 
They always Thank do you when for it's the actually uh, member. national. Paragraph six uh, states $989 for registration fees um, and economy flights currently costing between, oh, this is cheap, $140 and $385 each way. Um, there is no business class on national internal flights members. Um, so, Councillor Donovan, would you accept the nomination? Um, uh, so, members, um, that will say appoints Councillor Donovan as voting delegate. You can take out the words as council representative. <laughs> I don't know. That we just you should be as the Members, I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Hyde, seconded Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? There's no compensation, so Councillor Donovan, you can. Uh, thank you. That Congratulations, Councillor Donovan. Um, that is fabulous. Uh, members, that takes us to item 13 on the report, which is the Lord Mayor's presiding report for March. Um, members, uh, it has actually been a very busy month uh, with festival season underway. Uh, fantastic, of course, to have our uh, world-renowned festivals and probably the only festivals in the world going ahead at the moment, including the Adelaide Fringe, the Adelaide Festival, Rice Week and Wome Adelaide. Um, there, we know for a fact there aren't many places in the world that have got such amazing arts festivals happening at the moment. Um, there's been a lot of posting of the activity, uh, which is drawing great response worldwide. Um, I did attend the launch of the Garden of Unearthly Delights on the 18th of February, the opening of the Adelaide Festival and the performance of Midsummer Night's Dream at the Festival Theatre on February 26th and spoke at Midnight Oil's WOMAD concert last night. Um, I've also attended uh, several shows and performances in between and that's called Burning the Midnight Oil which I do, yeah, I know, for the oils, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, thank you, Councillor Martin, for actually appreciating that little part. I'm looking forward to welcoming the directors and artists to the Adelaide Town Hall uh, on Thursday night for a reception uh, to thank them for their extraordinary efforts in putting on this year's festival under what were incredibly challenging circumstances. Uh, you only have to talk to any of the directors or um, producers to know how much work went into it and how much they've had to work closely with the uh, SAPOL and the SA Health to get their COVID plans in place and also to get visas through. Um, Monday uh, was also International Women's Day. Um, I attended the Business SA lunch today and tomorrow I speak at Shike SSA's International Women's Day lunch. I'm also hosting girls from Adelaide High School, Adelaide Botanic High, St Mary's College and Pulteney Grammar School for afternoon tea and a Q&A uh, tomorrow afternoon. Last week, I launched our cultural strategic partnerships here at the Adelaide Town Hall, uh, which will help create some extraordinary experiences in the city um, in accordance with a strategic plan outcome. Uh, the City of Adelaide invested $250,000, which su will support the delivery of 13 new projects and programs, uh, which worth approximately $975,000 um, once you count in the partner contributions. And the value of the partnerships ranged uh, between 10 and 40,000 to each partner. And I hope you've had a chance to have a look at some of those strategic partnerships. They're quite extraordinary. Um, they will have a significant cultural, social and economic impact across the city, a result in increased employment in the arts and culture sector, aid economic recovery as a result of COVID-19, as well as boost city wellbeing through engagement with the arts, adding to our reputation as a creative city. On the 24th of February, I held a reception for the Adelaide Parklands Art Prize finalists. 
and I'm looking forward to attending the awards night on the 19th of March, which is, of course, was uh, postponed for a year due to COVID. So this is the 2020 prize. Uh, this month, I also met with Mayor Claire Bone from the City of Port Adelaide Enfield, Mayor Angela Evans from the City of Charles Sturt and Mayor David O'Loughlin from the City of Prospect uh, to discuss uh, support for uh, funding for the Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Um, the biggest users of the Ad Adelaide Aquatic Centre live in their council areas and they have indicated they are supportive of our bid for state or federal funding. Last week, I also participated in uh, Bloomberg City Lab, where I had the opportunity to discuss COVID-19 recovery projects and programs that we've been undertaking uh, with mayors from all over the world. It was um, absolutely fantastic to share that information strategy and also to check in on how uh, mayors from all around the world are doing in their own cities, many of whom were still in lockdown. Um, I only wish it wasn't held between 2 and 5 a.m. in the morning Adelaide time. Um, this afternoon, we launched a new gathering place for young people, um, and this is in the southwest corner of Victoria Square, Tatum Younger, um, by David uh, Court, an artist, and I hope that you can go and have a look at that new installation there. Can I have someone move that my report be accepted? Thank you, Councillor Hyde, second to Councillor Sims. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, item 14 on tonight's agenda is council members' report, and I will ask for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, and a seconder, Councillor Knoll. Members, oh, are there any comments, changes? If not, Councillor Hyde to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, I have 11 questions on notice tonight. Uh, which I will take as read uh, with leave of the chambers, though in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, and of course, the answers to all those questions will be on the website, Councillor Martin. I'm sorry, anticipating the next question. Uh, I have <laughs> uh, questions without notice. Um, I have one question without notice from Councillor Abraham today, but I'm not sure that I've got the final question, Councillor. That's right, yes. I saw that, Councillor Rand. <laughs> <laughs> Did you throw that, Councillor Rand? We know how you deal. <laughs> um, I have the one that was sent through yesterday evening, if that's the right one, the question right. without yeah. notice. Yes, yesterday. Can I just double check? This is Councillor Abraham today. My apologies. Is this the question? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I might ask the acting C to answer the first part of the question. So, what is the question? <laughs> what is the question? Oh, right. yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you uh, through the presiding member, members. Um, on the 19th of February 2019, uh, Council received an unsolicited proposal from the Adelaide Football Club. Um, on the 12th of March 2019, Council approved progressing it to stage two, um, and then that was formally withdrawn by the Adelaide Football Club on the 2nd of April 2020. Uh, the second part of the question, um, I will answer Councillor Abraham today in my correspondence from uh, John Olson. He formally advised of the club's withdrawal from any further consideration of the site as an option, um, citing the grounds of it being uneconomic based on their latest accommodation strategy and in particular considering the impacts of COVID-19. Thank you. Uh, members? Well, Lord Mayor, can I ask that that's in, that answer is included in the minutes? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Can I ask that that answer is included in the minutes? I think you can do that by leave. Uh, I need a motion for that to be included in the minutes. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Abraham. Members to the vote, those in favour, 
as against that is included in the minutes. Members, are there any further questions without notice? Councillor Martin and Councillor Hyde. Yes, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. My first question is in relation to the answer given to Councillor Hyde at 15.8 Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Um, the administration advises that there will be closure of services at the Adelaide Aquatic Centre if the policy set out at three is followed for the coming year and does not disclose uh, why it would deviate from that. Could the administration advise which of the services at the Adelaide Aquatic Centre will likely close? One moment, Councillor Hyde. Uh, Councillor Martin, my apologies. I do see. Through the presiding member, uh, no, I'm unable to do that. Councillor, I don't have that information. Uh, um, does that mean you'll take it on notice and advise me internally or externally or um, at the next meeting? Or? My apologies, sorry, I was just asking a question. Uh, through the presiding member, I, I wouldn't like to take an undertaking to commit to that. I'd need to confer with the appropriate staff um, just to check what the information is. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, may I also ask, um, in relation to uh, 15.6 uh, uh, in the item headed risk, um, uh, the administration says it is considered risk in association with the possible redevelopment of the property opposite 88 O'Connell Street and regards it as a benefit rather than a risk. Can I ask the administration directly as it did not address it, has it considered there may be some difficulty in selling apartments at 88 O'Connell Street if there is a fear that there will be a development of equal height immediately opposite? See Through the presiding member, I'll take that on notice. Thank you. Um, and in respect to uh, COVID-19 financial impact 15.3, the administration advised uh, that the, um, the total impact of COVID-19 uh, is $28.7 million, which is an increase of $8.7 million in the two weeks since the 23rd of February. Could the administration advise why COVID-19 has inflicted another $9 million of costs on the city in two weeks? Acting C. Through the presiding member, it was the $20 million uh, that was mentioned in the workshop was in relation to a specific time frame. Your question um, asked for more of a community cumulative number is my understanding but I can take that on notice and bring it back next but, month. Thank you but I would be correct in discussing uh, broadly with the community that our COVID losses are 29 million dollars not 20 million dollars has been as has been previously advised. Acting C. Through the presiding member um, I'd encourage Councillor Martin to read the admin comment and please quote the information that's there because that will be accurate as at today. I understand and I'm only asking because I'm not clear but uh, I would appreciate a response on that and just briefly um, in response to 15.4 the administration advises that the city's total expenditure um, for 2019-20 uh, on carbon credits is 47,450. Um, but then it advises that our total expenditure on carbon credits is 47,450. But inadvertently, in a response uh, related to increased electricity consumption, the administration advises um, that there is a significantly greater figure. Um, for the years 27, 18, 19 and 20. Could I have some clarity with re regarding that? I'm happy to take that on notice too. Through, yeah, through the presiding member, um, the different questions with different answers. Uh, if I could really encourage councillor, I have offered this before, really happy to try and sit down um, so that you're getting the information you need um, to help you. Um, so if through the presiding member that offer is there, whether it's financial information or other information, so, well, so, that, so that I, the information we're providing is, is clear for you. I understand. And Lord Mayor, by so way I can of personal, still take that on notice. By the way of personal uh, explanation, 
I did make an appointment with the appropriate staff member. I did ask the information for the information some eight weeks ago. It was never provided, and therefore I resorted to a question on notice. Through the presiding member, sorry, just that's really disappointing to hear uh, that you received that level of service from the administration. I'd really encourage all council members to continue to uh, direct queries of this nature through to me and the appropriate uh, director. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Sorry, sorry Councillor Martin. I did that. Mm -hmm. I did that. Councillor Hyde. Um, my question is following on from 15A regarding the um, uh, Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Um, and I apologise if the question was vague when I was looking to have reported um, the precise capital expenditure, when it's expected to be expended, and what it is for. Um, I already had the um, I already had the year-to-year -year figures in the long-term financial plan, the $3.5 million, the $2 million, etc., etc. I was hoping um, to be provided with a precise list of exactly what assets are being replaced. And it, it actually sort of answers Councillor Martin's question around, okay, well, if you don't replace whatever you're doing in 22, 23, with $3.464 million, what, what, what are you not doing? Um, uh, noting that the administration would have those detailed uh, spreadsheets because they've informed their quite precise figures that they have the long-term financial plan, could they please provide that? Uh, potentially in confidence if need be to members. Acting C. Through the presiding member, um, as stated in the report, we were hoping for some clarity on the future of the Aquatic Centre from uh, Council in the near future. Um, and obviously any sort of consideration of a facility um, and timeframes associated with that will help inform um, what, which, which renewals will be delivered. But however, um, perhaps it will be helpful at some point to, um, for council members to understand which elements of renewals are more important than others. So happy to try and do that at a convenient time. If any at all. Um, so it was a yes that we would That was for. yes, you're okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> members. On that, on that note, uh, thank you for your attendance this evening. I will close the meeting.